The dean added that his mom, an assistant master so her punishment would not be severe. Xu Nian queried if it was true that the punishment would not be severe for this. After all, he was very worried about his mother. The dean assured him, she herself is from the capital. The Shu family from the Jade Dragon Mountain is indirectly related to her, so you can trust her. The dean realizes that the young man really wants to see his mother, but he'd better not go to the capital for now. Not until his strength surpasses hers, Junian wondered. How would his strength be able to surpass the princess level? It was unrealistic. The dean said that even if he went there, he wouldn't see his mother, unless his strength could change the Shu family's decision. The girl added that moreover his relationship with her could lead to his death in the imperial capital. Even though she has the level of a princess, she would only be able to protect herself. The master added that he had many enemies too. Exposing our relationship is more dangerous than going to the capital. Xu Nian was puzzled and a little upset. He didn't know what decision he should make now. He needed to find answers to the questions Zhu who were his teachers. Milady joined in and said she had enemies too and some of those enemies are still alive. Junian weighed the pros and cons and decided that he'd better practice harder for now. The master said that he had appeared here to give the young man this Dragon King's fist, and he gave Shunian a very important book. The master turned around, saying he had other important things to do. He couldn't stay here, and he flew away. Just as suddenly as he'd appeared, the young man realized that he would have to train from the book on his own. It's been a whole ten days. As they were escorted to the competition, they were wished on behalf of all pupils for success wonderful victories, and outstanding achievements. The young men thanked for the blessing and said they would do their best. And this time, they will definitely bring victory. A bird arrived and the young men were invited aboard the flying machine. The boys jumped on the bird in one leap. Now they could do it without much difficulty. Only Junian was still on the ground. He was asked why he was not getting up. The young man looked with surprise at the ring. Afterward, Guy lifted the ring high up. The bird flew in, chirped, and began its descent over Zhu Nian. The young man, already aboard his bird, explained his action by saying that his Xiao Yu would be offended if he used another flying machine. So he flew his own. The girls waved at them and wished them a pleasant flight and a soft landing. The young men shouted for the girls to expect good news from them. The two migratory birds were moving away until they completely disappeared into the sky. At this time, Chen Woody was riding the Black Thunderbolt Leopard. He found it very interesting. The rider adjusted the route and said that they were now going to the city of Tainfen. Birds were soaring in the sky. Shunian sat on the back of his Xiaoyu and meditated. Another crew was interested in what the young man was doing on his bird. They assumed that one was practicing sword skills, and immediately wondered how one could practice sword skills while sitting on the back of a bird. Dean confirmed, when sword wielding reaches a certain level, it goes beyond the range of skills, focusing on the perception of creative concept. Chu Nian practiced the Sword of Sharp Wind. The cold wind in the air guided him to realization. Dugu Jinchen cried and said that he was the only one without sword skills. Three days later, the expedition flew to Tianfen. Flying over the city was forbidden. It was decided to go for a landing. The young men concluded that it was much more prosperous here than in Tianhai. The travelers made their way to Tianchen Academy, an area for out-of-town visitors. The dean said hello to the local dean. They exchanged pleasantries. The girl pointed out that after the last competition, there were many talents in Qinling Academy. This is very encouraging. Dean Li said that Chengfeng Academy is also determined to win this time. He added that if his disciples harmed the disciples of Qinglin Academy this time, don't blame them for it. One of the students of Chengfeng Academy said that the sword art of Dugu Jincheng of Qinglin Academy is excellent. He holds the title of Genius Swordmaster. Would he be willing to compete before the competition? Doug Zenchen said he wasn't interested. The Chenfeng Academy disciple was a little upset. Dean Lee said that we'll see you in the trials arena then. We hope that your swordmaster can live up to his title. The next morning, everyone was ready to compete. The young men were discussing among themselves about the future performance. Dugu said that there is a lot of talent in these competitions. This time, getting a good ranking will not be as easy as expected. Shunian looked at the list of competitors and wondered, how were they able to evaluate them before the game? Dugu replied that every time before the academy competition, the prefecture ranks the students of the top 10 academies in advance. The rank in the competition can be bet on. Shunian looked at the fact that out of the 30 contestants, he was ranked 29th. Dugu said that the dean purposely withheld Shunian's information, she wants him to be a dark horse, and helped him win the money. Shunian was very surprised by this information. The youngster added that all the other members of Qinling Academy are very strong and in good places in the rankings. 
The girl's rank is actually higher than Dugu Jingcheng's. He added that Zhu Ying is the first genius of Tianheng Academy. He is already 24 years old. Two years ago, he reached the peak of level 9 of the Star World. His strength is incredible. He is using a sword made of black roundup. The guy added that college only restricts the participation of the Star World, but does not prohibit breakthroughs during competitions. Therefore, many people decide to make a breakthrough in the competition. Dugu said that Zhao Yang reached the peak of the Star World two years ago. He is in Refiner. It is said that he controls a very powerful flame. Xunian thought that he was also a true refiner. Dugu added that in third place was Feng Yu, who they had seen yesterday. She is 22 years old, peak 9 stars, innate sword spirit body. She is a very strong cultivator. Her pride is normal. Xunian noticed Qin Tian's name from Tianheng Academy on the list of participants. He asked if it might be his talented brother. There's gonna be a meeting. The gawkers marveled at the big black leopard that strolled peacefully with the young man on its back through the city. The leopard came up to the sheriff's house, and the rider said to report that the young master had returned. He arrived a day late because he had not used the eagle, but he made it in time for the start of the contest. The servant was very excited for they were waiting, and the young miss was very anxious. The young man laughed and asked how he guessed his clever idea. The girl grabbed the guy by the ear and said she was trying her best to find her rogue brother. The young man yelled out that he was in pain and didn't deserve to be treated like that. The girl said he must tell immediately where he had been all these months. He and his father were very worried after all. The boy shouted that he was wrong. Chen Woody stood in front of his sister and apologized. This was how he hoped to be forgiven. The boy explained to his sister that he decided to run away from home for her. The girl was very surprised to hear such a confession. He said he was looking for a husband for his sister. He thought it was imperative that he find his older sister a husband so she would stop abusing her brother. She's so cruel. We should turn the tables on the husband, for example. The sister didn't like that answer. The brother was immediately hit in the jaw with a right punch, and the nice girl asked again where he had been all this time. His brother realized that he couldn't hide the truth any longer and confessed that he had been at Qinglin Academy all this time. The sister certainly didn't expect such a response from her sibling. Chen Wudi said that he had witnesses in the form of the dean and the students of the academy. They are just all at Tianheng Academy right now. His sister asked why he had traveled so far. After all, his family got him into Tianchen Academy. The guy said again that he was looking for a son-in-law. He added that he'd found one, but he was four years younger. But he's very good, and his talent is better than yours. The girl continued beating her younger brother, kicking him out of the room. The young men watched from the balcony what was happening below. They took an interest in the girls across from them. The girls noticed the young men too. One of the strangers hid her face under a veil. Xunian felt some sort of emotional impact on him. The young man was taken aback. This had never happened to him before. The guy thought it might be a spiritual attack. The interlocutor reassured him. He said they were students from Tianzang Zong Academy. The academy only accepts girls. That's why there are so many beautiful female students here. Xunian noticed that the girls from their college were much prettier. The young Lulis said goodbye until tomorrow. The veiled girl was interested in the young man. He has dual spiritual body cultivation and his physique is very attractive. Besides Zhao Yan, there is another good prey. The girl wondered what this young man tasted like. The next day came. Xu Nian noted that there were very many people present. This was a rare event in Dongyang country. A gathering of talents from the top 10 academies. Many people came here from other cities. They announced the sheriff's appearance. A very important looking man appeared. It was the sheriff. Junin noted that he had the peak of nine stars and prince-level might. His face seemed familiar to the young man. The sheriff took the floor and said that the deans have been working hard. This time the competition is livelier than usual. The sheriff sat back in his seat and said there is a lot of talent in the top ten academies. He looks forward to seeing them perform. An elder, a representative of the academy, appeared spectacularly. He introduced himself as Sun Heng. This time, he was in charge of the academy competition. The elder called everyone to order. He said he would tell them the rules of the competition. The preliminary competition will take place today. The next, semi-final, will include 16 contestants. Chunin and his comrades were surprised that this would be an elimination contest. The sheriff noted that this is all quite intriguing. The elder continued and said that the reward of the competition was that the top eight students would be eligible to join the Marshall House immediately. The reward of the top three, a heaven-level battle skill. All the spectators were thrilled with the awards. That's really great. 
The Elder continued that for a second heaven-level martial skill and a meteorite iron weapon forged by a master. The audience came to an even greater delight. The Elder prepared to announce the first place award. The audience was getting restless. The Elder gave out that the first prize was a heaven-level battle skill and a piece of magic gold crystal steel and a three-day tutorial from the Sheriff. Everyone in the stands went crazy! Magic Gold Crystal Steel is a material for magical weapons, which can carry powerful sage-level power. The sheriff said he likes talented young people. Zhu Nin decided that he should receive the first place reward, to make up for the red fire gold lost by the master when he exchanged it for secret spirit skills. The young man also wondered, would the sheriff be able to match the god emperor? Elder reiterated that the contest will end when all but 16 contestants have fallen off the platform. Everyone in the stands sighed once again. The elder began to call out the participants one by one. The first one was Ji Yun. The young man appeared spectacularly in the arena. He landed immediately with sword in hand and took a fighting stance. The warrior introduced himself, saying his name was Ji Yun. The girls in the stands were in awe of this handsome man. Zhu Nin decided that there would be a grand show. The elder summoned Zhao Yan. A warrior emerged from the fiery flames. Feng Yu was announced next. The girl looked modest and shy. Her sword was in its sheath behind her back. The onlookers remarked that she looked great. She has the innate body of a sword spirit. The elder next announced Doug Jin Cheng. The young man flew gloriously into the arena as well. Then Xin Yan appeared behind him. Xin Yan was unarmed, but he looked spectacular as well. Xu Nian was left standing by himself. The elder summoned our hero to the arena as well. And now, the entire trio of Qingling Academy was already standing in the arena. But not everyone was familiar with the young disciple Xu Nian. One of the students at Tianhen Academy recognized the young man as his half-brother, said he had been banished from the family. He didn't expect to see him here. The interlocutor said it would be crazy. Does it really matter that a young man might die? Xu Nian noticed that his brother and his comrade were staring at him intently. He thought that they were conspiring to get rid of him right away. Xu Nian's comrades thought that maybe someone should join them to deal with the malcontents. Xu Nian asked, How long could Dugu last against the combined efforts of Zhao Yan and Ji Yun? The latter replied that at least 15 minutes. Xu Nian thought that this would be quite enough. The young man asked, what was on Xu Nian's mind? Xu Nian was developing a plan to confront his opponents. And in doing so, he calculated the conditions under which they should win. Xu Nian knew that 14 people had to drop out. They would deal with three at once. In 15 minutes, the others would get rid of the 11 remaining. The young man said that even if the personal ranking is high, the academy's ranking will lose more. Shunian added that if things didn't go according to plan, everyone should take care of themselves. He noticed that these girls were studying him intently. The elder said, declaring the competition officially open. The spectators in the stands chanted joyfully. The participants breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, they could have fights. The Qinglin Academy disciples were immediately rushed towards the opponents. The fight was three against three. They had already divided up who would fight whom. Feng Yu thought, should Ji Yuan and Zhao Yan eliminate Dugu Jingcheng right away? If they eliminated him, it would mean that he didn't have enough strength, and it wouldn't be interesting to challenge him. The girl decided she would get rid of the weak trash first. At this time, the battle between the participants had already begun. The rival said he would eliminate the young man. It's not easy for him to be here. Then he can enjoy with all the spectators how the masters fight. The fighter looked at his opponent. He was overcome with fear and shouted for help. While his opponent was deciding on his first strike, he did it himself, and his opponent got a left. His first thought was that he'd been tricked. The blow was so hard that the opponent flew well back. The audience didn't expect this kind of plot development. It was great. A single strike was enough for Wei Yun of Tianheng Academy to be eliminated. There were 29 people left in the arena. Dugu's opponent was stealthily sneaking up from behind. He didn't even realize that he was not doing well in the rear. A stunning blow from our warrior hit his opponent right on the back of the head. The cunning disciple of Qingling Academy said that it was dangerous to attack from the back, and announced that Beihai Academy's Qian, he had been eliminated. Feng Yu and her opponent looked at the scoreboard. There were 26 people left in the stands. There's still a lot to look forward to. Suddenly, our warrior is attacked. The opponent decided to strike him with his sword, but he didn't. He dodged the blow with lightning speed. His opponent leaned forward by inertia. Our athlete grabbed his opponent by the skins, leaving him no chance to escape. And with the words, Bye Bye Warrior, the opposing team went far out on a limb. Wang Hu of Benhai Academy has been eliminated. There are 19 people left. Feng Yu has defeated her opponent. 
On the scoreboard, there were 18 people left. The girl with the Vuvla sends another opponent to the chest with a punch to knockout. 17 people in the stands. Dugu with his sword comes upon the enemy. The one realizes that the two losers from Benhai Academy are a disgrace. A warrior appeared, who had a clear plan to incapacitate Xu Nian. He didn't know yet that Xu Nian was the dark horse of Qingling Academy. This warrior, attacking our hero, put his hand forward and told his opponent to behold his palm. Xu Nian noticed that the palm was not weak, so he would have to reveal his abilities. At the very last moment, when the opponent's hand was already in front of Xu Nian's face, and he was already starting to reveal his secret abilities, a command sounded for everyone to stop. The Elder announced that there were 16 warriors left in the arena. The first phase is complete. The opponent, not yet calming down his heated hand, said that Xu Nian was lucky this time. He added that the young man had better pray that he would not meet him in further competitions. Otherwise, Zhu Nian would not survive. Xu Nian asked if his opponent was another, would he also deal with him in this manner? The young man replied so that Xu Nian would not ask for mercy next time. It wouldn't do any good. Dugu called out to Xu Nian to stop this pointless conversation. Our hero was lying in his room resting after the competition. Milady said that she had specifically improved his fighting skills. She added that his big bone was a good thing, except that the young man didn't know how to handle it. The guy said he only practiced sword skills, and he can only tap with a bone. Milady explained that there were three techniques in this martial skill. Destructive Thunder was the middle skill of the ground level. Meteor is the highest ground level skill. Tiangang is a secondary skill of the sky level. It's very powerful. Shunian repeated those names. They are so cool. Milady said that it's just a sky level skill. It's just using Reiki and Qi energy. The real power is a combination of heaven and earth. That's why saints are so powerful. Shunian said that he is too far away from that. He wants to be strong right now. He asked my lady to teach him these techniques. The girl said that he must listen and memorize. First, he must use the chi energy in his body. Then change the way he uses airflow, which puts a lot of stress on his body. If his body can't control it, he will explode and die. Tiangang uses the power of heaven and earth. Perseverance and understanding should be enough. Milady suggested that we start the training with the first intake. The second day of competition has arrived. Today is the semifinals. The elder began to repeat the conditions of the competition. There will be eight pairs in which the competitors will face each other. The sheriff will draw the lots. The sheriff agreed and said he was starting. The sheriff began pulling sticks with the names of the participants. The first to be announced was Luo Chen from Qingfeng Academy. He will be fighting against Ji Yun from Tia Heng Academy. The sheriff would call and the elder would invite those contestants into the arena. The spectators again gave a friendly welcome to all competitors. The young men entered the arena and began to greet each other. One of the warriors traditionally said that he was willing to accept his opponent's defeat or he would have to be beaten. His opponent wasn't going to give up. That's not why he came here. The onlooker started shouting that this warrior was so rude and nasty. The athlete said that he wouldn't give up so easily and bear his sword. He wants to see Brother G's strength now that he is here. Brother G said it's fine, so let's tumble around the arena. Let's see who's the strongest among us. The warrior immediately stabbed his opponent in the stomach, without even using his sword. The blow was not weak. The young man flew backwards. He was lying on the ground. There was foam coming out of his mouth. The fight is over. The warriors chanted the name of the winner, waving their hands in greeting. Woody Chen and his sister were also on the podium among the spectators. The girl didn't really like the performance. She said that Ji Yun seriously injured others as well. He's not a good person. Brother said that you can't talk about him like that. The girl added that Ji Yun has powerful strength but a terrible character. Woody Chen said that the young man he wants to introduce to her is not only stronger than Ji Yun, he also has a great character. At the same second, there was violence in the stands. Another fight was recorded. The sister took a right hook and her brother got a punch to the jaw. The elder announced the second pair, Zie Yu versus Zhao Yan. Xi Yu simplified the fight and decided to give up right away. He was only satisfied with making it to the semi-finals. Zhao Yan thought it was the right decision and regretted not meeting Xu Nian. Xu Nian calmly waited to be invited into the arena. The elder announced the third pair, Zhao Yang versus Dugu Jing Cheng. Zhao Yang said that he wanted to get to the bottom of it and find out why his opponent had beaten him in the last stage. To do so, they will meet in a fight now. The warrior motioned for Doug to attack first. Dugu took his time and waited for his opponent to yank toward him as well. And then the arc released a powerful charge of energy that flashed between the fighters. It was very strong, and the opponent had no time to do anything about it. 
His face contorted with horror. He realized the hopelessness of the situation. Zhao Yan flew up, dropped his sword from his hands, and landed on the ground with a somersault. Doug Jingcheng liked the landing. He asked his opponent if everything was alright. He hadn't expected it to get this bad himself. Zhao Yan sat in the arena, blood flowing from his mouth. He was no longer a fighter. Chen Woody couldn't help but laugh, it was hilarious. The spectators in the stands were not happy that the fight was over so quickly. They shouted from the stands that it was a disgrace, and there was no need to come to the competition at all. The elder declared Dugu Jingcheng the winner of this fight. Woody Chen's sister remarked that Dugu was very strong. Her brother told her that Dugu Jingchen was very good, but he was only third in their academy. The sister asked, who is the second and the first? Woody Chen said the second one was him. The first one is his son-in-law, Xu Nian. What followed was an untranslatable play on words using the local dialect and another act of violence against his younger brother. The elder announced that Feng Yu had won another fight. Her opponent had been injured in the arm and could not continue the fight. The next battle was won by Wang Dong, a representative of Tianlan Academy. The mysterious girl Lin Ruolin defeats her opponent after a graceful kick to her opponent's chest. Xu Nian, watching this fight, wondered, how could this girl's Reiki be able to carry such an evil and bloody gas? We need to learn more about her cultivation techniques. The seventh pairing is Chen Han versus Lin Xifeng. Xu Nian wished his comrade good luck. The young man noted that only he and Qin Tian were left. The opponent looked arrogantly at the young man. Xu Nian noticed that he was looking down on him. So there would be no mercy for him, our hero decided. The rivals met in the arena. At first glance, it seemed that the forces were clearly not equal. Chen Han said that Lin Xifeng had won last time. Now it was time for a rematch. Lin Xifeng told his opponent not to be overconfident. Chen Han shouted that his strength was beyond imagination. Then he added that he would break his opponent's bones. Then he moved forward, waving his weapon. Chen Han looked very threatening. He jumped up, wanting to strike his opponent hard. Lin Xifeng looked up from below at this with a calm gaze. The swords of the warriors clashed in a fierce confrontation. Sparks flew in all directions. Lin Xifeng looked very dignified and had no intention of yielding to his opponent. The fight was fierce and fierce, and it was impossible to know who was gaining the upper hand in this fight. The big guy tried to use his secret technique on his opponent, but Lin Xifeng dodged and grabbed his opponent's arm. The warrior's eyes radiated fury, and it was hard to stand their direct gaze. Our warrior headbutted the bulky man in the nose. He screamed in pain and blood spurted from his nose. After that, Chen Chong collapsed with his back on the ground. Xu Nian exulted with joy. The young men patted each other on the shoulder. Xu Nian knew that his friend would not let him down. He said that he was looking forward to Xu Nian's performance. It would be a great ending to today. The elder announced the last pairing for today. Xu Nian versus Qin Tian. Xu Nian was ready for this fight. His gaze expressed confidence and calmness. Woody Chen's sister, a green-eyed blonde, looked at the young man with interest. Her brother intercepted her gaze and asked if she liked the young man, if she already wanted to marry him. The girl recognized him. This was the same pervert who peeped at her while she was swimming in the wilderness conditions. And this guy was recommended to her by her brother. The girl's face lit up and she said he was very handsome. A plan was already brewing in her head. The youths thought that Qin Tian would easily defeat a weak opponent today. No one had heard anything good about this Xu Nian. One of them regretted not being able to teach the guy a lesson himself. Yesterday, he had gotten two of his teammates eliminated from the game. They relied on Qin Tian. He'll pay the price for all of them. Talking among themselves, one told the other that the rivals were half-brothers. However, he added, Qin Tian, the first son, and Xu Nian, the maid's son. Qin Tian will not be merciful today. The other person in the conversation only laughed in response. Qin Tian told his brother that he didn't expect to see him at the competition. Xu Nian said that not everything happens as you imagine it to be. He added that Qin Hung died by his hand. Qin Tian was stunned by this news. It was a shock to the young man. Xu Nian continued and said, Brother Hen claimed that he had killed his mom. So I massacred him in a fit of rage. Later it turned out that his mother was alive. She was taken away by other people. Xu Nian added that there was no need to grieve for his brother too much. Qin Heng sent his half-brother out and shouted loudly. It was a natural reaction, but it was unpleasant to look at. The young man before the fight couldn't contain his emotions. Xu Nian had purposely provoked him to piss him off. Qin Heng pounced on his opponent with curse words, wanting to avenge his brother. Xu Nian retaliated by pulling out his secret weapon, the bone. Bone versus sword. Who would have thought? The sword flew out of the warrior's hands. 
It was very sudden. After flying some distance, the sword stabbed straight into the arena. Chin Hung looked at his sword in surprise. Now he was unarmed, and the opponent had a bone. His hands trembled with excitement. Shunian apologized and said that his opponent wouldn't be able to deal with him. But he could try again and take his weapon to do so. Chin Heng became even more angry. He realized that his brother was bullying him. The fighter walked over to his sword and gripped it. Junian ironically remarked as he was just about to test out his new technique. The young man was clearly mocking his opponent. Junin said that he would now show the best student of Qingling Academy. Everyone was surprised to see that the young man had a sword in his hands again. What kind of strange bone is this? The opponents began to wonder at Shunian's words. Isn't Dugu Jingcheng the number one in the Qingling Academy? Shunian began to emit a powerful energy, and everyone realized that he was not to be trifled with. The sheriff watched with interest to see how the fight would go. Two talented swordmasters were performing. Shunian hit his strength so skillfully. Qin Heng was suppressed. Such a powerful sword aura from his opponent. How was this possible? He asked his brother how he does it. Isn't he a pacifier? Why was he hiding his power? Xu Nian said that his brother saw him practicing hard. So he gave him poison. He drank it for six years. The audience hearing this became outraged. You can't do that. It's not human. The young man added that Qin Yun Shan had destroyed his cultivation and broken his legs, and ordered the servants to throw him on the mass graves. Xu Nian said that now it was his turn. He wants to see the fake Qin family's genius power that he has admired since he was a child. Qin Heng said that he would not lose to Xu Nian. Qin Hen applied the mid-level ground sword formula, Jin Yuan Strike. Xu Nian replied with a drifting wind of 13 swords and showed the wind trace. Our hero stood invincible and confident. He was ready to hide his skills no longer. He was asked how he was able to break a mid-level earth sword so easily. Xu Nian shouted to look at his sword. He applied the wind of 13 swords and the thunder of the sky. His opponent was hurt badly and blood gushed from his mouth. He flew far outside the arena and banged against the wall. Chin Heng slid down the wall directly onto the ground. He sat there without moving. Blood continued to flow from his mouth. The young man realized that he had underestimated Xu Nian. In the next competition, one must take all aspects into account and be prudent. Everyone pondered over how to behave in the future with Xu Nian. The deans met to discuss the results of the performances after the semifinals. Dean Len was told that she had a wonderful student. She replied that she believes in him. This time she's serious about being number one. Her opponent countered that she was so ambitious. Tianchen Academy is a very serious institution. Dean Len said that she respects Tianheng Academy. She just has a lot of faith in her students. The girl added that Dean Yang probably believes in his students too. All contestants proceeded to their rooms. Standing in front of the entrance were some young men who seemed familiar to Xu Nian. When the young man came closer, he saw a girl he never expected to meet. The green-eyed blonde called the guy by name. Next to her was her brother, Chen Woody. The companions told Xu Nian while looking at the blonde girl that a beautiful girl was looking for him. Woody Chen introduced her. He said it was his sister, Chen Yao. They came together. The young men began to introduce themselves to the girl, wanting to get her to like them. They said they had just finished performing. Chen Yao didn't react to them in any way. They had to say goodbye and leave. The girl glared at our hero. Her gaze was harsh and did not bode well. Zhu Nian was at a loss from confusion and didn't know what to answer. Woody Chen said that he was great today and his sister wanted to get to know him better. The girl's facial expression was still the same. She had a sword swinging in her hand. Before Woody Chen could speak, the girl lunged forward, trying to damage Zhu Nian with her blade, or at least scare him. The young man barely managed to dodge. The brother, not understanding anything, tried to calm the girl down and said that you shouldn't be so cruel whenever you meet young people. Zhu Nian shouted that he was Woody Chen's friend. Here the brother couldn't take it anymore and yelled at his sister to stop now. He stood between the young men and like a referee, began to pull them apart with his hands. Woody Chen, still not understanding anything, asked his sister why she bare her sword. After all, they had come to get acquainted. The sister told the brother to get away from her. Otherwise an act of fratricide is about to take place. Woody Chen had already turned to Xu Nian when he first met his sister. Why is she behaving so inappropriately? Zhu Nian hesitated and didn't know how to answer his friend. He probably didn't need to know the whole truth. He said they met once in the monster forest and fought. He won with the help of his eagle, and now she's angry because she doesn't want to lose. Woody Chen genuinely wondered, how could a girl be defeated by a pet? Woody Chen reassured his sister and said that he would be in the fighting clan in a few days, and the two of them would have a fair fight. 
The brother continued. She has the silver moon dimension, he has the star dimension. It looks like the sister is bullying the young man. Woody Chen decided to take his sister home after meeting her. When he left, he invited Xu Nian to visit him at the sheriff's house, because the sheriff was his father. Xu Nian was surprised by the fresh news. These young people are brother and sister, and they are also the sheriff's children. I think that's enough news for today. Xu Nian in his room was meditating responsibly. Breakthrough of the spirit. Cultivation of the body. Star dimension. Nine stars. The aura around him shone. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. The young man asked irritably who was there. The door was ajar and appeared on the threshold. The girl with the veil. She said right away without a secret that she didn't expect to see the young man in such good shape. So she got a little carried away. Xu Nian recognized her. It was senior sister Lin from Tiantian Zong Academy. He asked what brought the girl here. The girl said there was nothing unusual. It's the same as always. She wants to enjoy the moon and talk to the boy about life. Zhu Nian tensed up. He wasn't like this. He called the girl Senior Marshal Sister Lin, said that it was already too late. This meeting might affect his reputation, and suggested we talk tomorrow. Let's talk and watch the sun. The girl told the guy not to be so ruthless. She was bored on this long night, and she seductively reached for the young man. The conniving lady put her hand on the guy's chest and said that when she sees his naked body, her heart starts beating faster. She wants to stay with him. The girl added that he was so handsome, and offered to spend the night with her. Shunyan was angered by the stranger's behavior. After all, he wasn't like that. The young man took out his fist after meditating and drove it right into the young lady's stomach. With the next blow, he smashed the girl's nose. The veil didn't help after which the seductress left the room, flying out the window. The night was truly unforgettable for her. She flew like a lone star for a long time yet. My lady said to the young man, what a pity. The guy said he was ready and didn't even feel her affecting his mind. Otherwise, she would have succeeded. The naive boy asked my lady what the girl wanted. My lady replied that she wanted his body. How so? Xu Nian continued to ask in surprise. Milady explained that she was going to absorb the qi energy and spiritual power of his body. She added that Lin Rulan, just a body, the real Lin Rulan had already been absorbed. Milady assumed that there was a dirty old witch in that body now. Shunyan was afraid for the girl. After all, her body had been seized. The young man thought it was too bad if this old monster had taken a fancy to him. Mentor said there was nothing to worry about. After all, he threw her out with his punch. Her body is the limit of what she can do. The girl added that such evil cultivation depends on various acts. An aura of enchantment is created by an aphrodisiac. But in close combat, this means is ineffective. Shunyan realized that if he met this maiden again, he would need to keep his distance. The next day, the elder entered the arena and began to announce the lists of participants for today. The first pair, Ji Yuan versus Lin Shifeng. The second pairing is Yan Yu versus Du Gu Jingchen. Third pair, Zhao Yang versus Shunyan. The young men were ready for this fight. Fourth pairing, Lin Rulan versus Vai Dong. Zhao Yang said that he would finally fight Xu Nian. He would give his opponent a chance to savor his fire. The young men were discussing who would fight whom. Now they need to go higher than the semifinals. The elder called the first pair into the arena. The warriors bowed to each other. Today must be harder than the day before. The warrior was calculating his chances of victory. Only the best remained. Lin Xifeng told his opponent that he wanted to learn a lesson from him. After that, he swung his sword and went on the attack with a shout. Both warriors were worthy of each other, but Ji Yuan's sword was longer. The young men began the battle. The spectators saw sparks and heard the clinking of blades coming into contact. Each of them showed their skills, and it was difficult to give anyone a preference. The forces were roughly equal. It was a fist fight. It was a real hand-to-hand -hand fight. Lin Xifeng also lands a leg kick to the head. He lost his balance and dropped his weapon. The opponent jumped and delivered another leg kick, blood spurting out of his opponent's mouth. Shunian saw his comrade fall to the ground. Dugu's brother noticed that the athlete had several broken ribs and an injured lower back. Shunian shouted that the opponent had done it on purpose. There was no need for that. Ji Yuan was proud of himself. He had won a convincing victory. In response to Shunian's remark, he only smiled wryly. The elder announced the second pair, Dugu Jingcheng and Feng Yu. Spectators began to place bets on who would win. The audience knew that Feng Yu was born with a sword spirit. She would get a double result by engaging half of her efforts in sword practice. The girl said that she had wanted to fight Dugu Jingcheng for a long time. Now her wish will come true. Brother Dugu said, You're welcome.
the opponents stood in the stands and waited to see who would start first. Dugu Jingchen decided to strike first. He made a dash toward his opponent. The girl was ready to meet him at full strength. Their swords met, and they drew apart, testing each other's strength. Turning around, the opponents went on the attack again. The blades glinted in the sun. The strength in the hands of both fighters was incredible. There was no way to determine who might emerge victorious. Both stood, a little tired, but neither was going to step aside. Feng Yu said that she recognized that her opponent was a sword-wielding genius. Therefore, she would now use her best techniques. The girl suggested how to fight for the first time. The young man said he had no problem supporting her wish. Feng Yu let go of her sword and it flew. Everyone was of course surprised to see such a phenomenon in the arena. Xu Nian immediately realized that the flying sword was the ability of a sage-level master who had discovered spiritual consciousness. The dean said that with a talented student, Chengfeng Academy's ranking would definitely change. Dugu Jingcheng prepared to repel the flying sword attack. Xu Nian realized that this was the same technique that Dugu had used in the fight with him. It's very powerful. The girl accompanied the flight of her sword with a powerful shout. From the outside, Xu Nian only saw puffs of smoke at the epicenter of events. When the smoke cleared, Dugu Jingchen stood with sword in hand. A large trench ran across the entire arena. Feng Yu was shocked and depressed. She tried her best, but her opponent wasn't hurt. The girl said doomfully, she was giving up. There was nothing more for her to do here. Her dean jumped up from his seat and shouted the traditional, How is this possible? Feng Yu said that Dugu Zhenchen turned out to be just a sharpening stone for her cultivation. She added that the youngster has every chance of taking first place in these competitions. Dugu Jingchen said that when he lost to Xu Nian, he was more hurt than he was now. The girl wondered how was Xu Nian Yu? All the spectators were surprised by this as well. How could one lose to Xu Nian? What about our bets to win? The elder said we should take a break to clean up the arena. An hour later, everything was ready and could proceed. Fire appeared behind the elder's back. The elder shouted for Xu Nian to hurry up. His adversary standing by the fire was shouting at his nerves not to keep him waiting. Xu Nian told his opponent not to shout. After cultivating, his character became even worse. The opponent did not stop and continued to shout, swear and morally humiliate our hero. Then he too directed a blob of his negative energy at Zhu Nian with a shout, hoping to strike his opponent. Zhao Yan continued to shout, waving his hands and sending his energy towards the young man. Zhu Nian stood calmly. He did not react to such a provocation. The deans couldn't understand why Zhu Nian wasn't doing anything. It's dangerous. Dean Lan was worried. It was time for her ward to do something. When that energy almost came close to Xu Nian, he extended his hand and commanded, Stop. Zhao Yan's jaw dropped. He had stopped it. This can't be happening. Xu Nian stood and controlled that fireball aimed at him with his hand. The audience couldn't believe it. They had never seen anything like this before in their lives. No one had ever seen it. Xu Nian said that he forgot to warn everyone present. He is not only a cultivator, but he is also a refiner. The entire audience grabbed their heads. How can they go up against each other together? That's how it could end. Dean Zhaoyang turned to Dean Len. Why had she been silent about this ability of her student? It turns out that Xu Nian was also practicing weapon refinement. The girl said she didn't know about it either. Dean Len thought that the young man had trained his spirit and body at once. Now he's also a refiner. She had truly found a treasure. Zhao Yan shouted that he couldn't believe what was happening. It doesn't happen like this. He decided to try the same thing again. Maybe the last time was a misfire. Zhao Yang shouted that Xu Nian would definitely be finished now. Xu Nian was ready to repeat this trick once more. There were now two fireballs in his hands. He tossed them up. And with the words, I return this to you, threw it at his opponent. The fireballs flew in the opposite direction. Zhao Yan was terrified of what was about to happen to him. Zhao Yan fell down and couldn't get up. No one had ever done this to him before. Xu Nian suggested that his opponent surrender. He's no match for him. It will be a one-gate game from now on. Zhao Yan continued to mutter that it was impossible. He shouted that he wouldn't give up. He's not like that. Everyone was interested in watching the fight continue. The second breath of the enemy was opened. Xu Nan said that although the latter had made a breakthrough, trash always remains trash. Zhao Yan, all blazing with rage, shouted that he wanted to see how long his opponent would remain arrogant. The spectators in the stands shouted that this had happened before when students made a breakthrough. They said that Xu Nian was so confident that he allowed his opponent to make a breakthrough. This type of disciple with amazing talent gains a very large range of strength after a breakthrough. The fireball continued to spin above the arena. Xu Nian watched from the side. At the epicenter was Zhao Yang. He said that there would now be consequences for Xu Nian. 
Xunan wondered what consequences could we be talking about. Zhao Yan said that this was the strength of his divine flame magic skill. Every time, the quality of his flames would rapidly increase. Zhao Yan said that no one could stop his sinister flame now. The warrior sent a now blue flame towards Xu Nian that no one could stop. Xu Nian in his hand with his sword was going to deal with this problem as well. The sheriff watching the fight asked, Is that the wind, wind blade? The young man shouted that the sword would destroy the silver moon Jin flame. Feng Yu wondered how could her peers have so many powerful sword skills that surpassed her skills. Dugu Jingchen concluded that Xu Nian had become stronger. Xu Nian, having repelled the attack, said that it was now his turn. He prepared to attack his opponent. The elder realized that something terrible could happen now. Zhao Yan didn't do anything. He just raised his hands in desperation. He only saw his opponent's shadow flicker. Once again, only a trench was left in the arena. Smoke rose above the arena. The spectators could see nothing. When the smoke cleared, everyone saw the elder dragging Zhao Yan. The elder said that Zhao Yan wouldn't be able to withstand this blow. He saved him to avoid losing during the competition. The elder announced Xu Nian's victory. The next day, our hero did exercises using a bone instead of a dumbbell and counted. He had already counted to 3,000. He was in a good mood. Young noted that this technique is really hard to practice. Xu Nian dreamed of the time when he could master the Meteor and Tiangang techniques. It was the most powerful martial skill he had ever practiced. In the future, he hoped to master two more techniques. His brother came over and said, stop practicing. Look how noisy it is outside. He added that Xu Nian is now Yi Yun's strongest opponent. The whole city is talking about it. Lin Ruolin's fight didn't stir the discussions after Xu Nian left. Although Ruolin won, there was no applause. It was all nothing compared to the reaction after his win. He told Xu Nan to take a bath, change his clothes, and come over. Today, he has to compete with Lin Ruolin. He must defeat her. The young men were told the most unpleasant news. They were very surprised. It turns out Lin Ruolin is missing and Zhao Yan died in his room. Chen Woody said that it was a terrible loss of life for a young athlete. Xu Nian realized that the old witch had done something to Zhao Yan. Looks like we should be more careful in the future. The elder said that Lin Rulan's disappearance is considered as abstinence, and Xu Nian comes out victorious. The elder announced Zhu Yan and Dugu Jingcheng. The young men entered the arena, both with swords and both confident of their victory. Each thought himself the strongest. Ji Wen has a very good physical fitness. He has powerful offensive and defensive skills. Dugu Jingchen is very good in attack and sword skills. But with excessive rate consumption, it will show a strong attack and weak defense. This time, Ji Yun was really strong and defeated Dugu Jingcheng. Xu Nan decided to practice both spiritually and physically. What it takes to lay a solid foundation. When he makes a breakthrough, he will be able to defeat an even higher level opponent. The elder announced that Ji Yun gets two hours to recover. The finals would take place in two hours. The spectators were chanting joyfully. Finally, they would see the fight of the year. The young man meditated. God's spiritual whirlpool, Ji Yun is about to make a breakthrough at this time. Everyone was shouting that he was really determined to win. He was really strong, but now he would be able to break through to the silver moon dimension, he would win. The spectators said that Xu Nian was able to defeat Zhao Nian, but it was not a fact that he would defeat Ji Yun, who had made a breakthrough. Chen Woody said that making a breakthrough at such a moment is shameful. Even if he wins, it will be shameful. Sister said that if Xu Nian has a choice, he can also make a breakthrough. Chen Wudi added that Xu Nian had only been practicing for a few months. It would not be easy to break through, but still, Xu Nian would be able to win. The green-eyed blonde did not take her gaze off Xu Nian. The young man suggested that Xu Nian should also make a breakthrough. Otherwise, he would be in a losing situation. Xu Nian didn't know what to say to that. He said that his spiritual cultivation was now at the peak of nine stars and his physical strength had only reached nine stars. It's unwise to make a breakthrough right now, but it's not a hopeless situation. The young man said that he could do it anyway, even if he didn't break through now. Brother Dugu said that one should be careful. Ji Yuan's qi cultivation energy is very strong. His sword is strong in both attack and defense. He won without exerting much effort. Zhu Nian replied to that, saying that he would try to be more careful. Ji Yuan stood in the arena and summoned his opponent who never entered the arena on time. The spectators in the stands chanted and said that they were all rooting for Ji Yuan. He is their hero. Xu Nian realized that his opponent here was considered a tough guy and everyone worshipped him. The young man suggested that Ji Yuan perform some sort of warm-up first. The opponent didn't understand exactly what he meant. Ji Yuan said that Xu Nani is not all at home. What kind of warm-up are you talking about? They came here to settle a relationship, not to warm up. Xu Nian said that if he tried warming up, he would like it. 
The opponent said he would give it a try and was happy to teach the lesson. Ji Wen decided not to be ceremonious for long and went for a warm-up attack. The young man assumed a combat warm-up stance and announced that he was all in anticipation. The opponent put out his furious fist and moved at Xu Nian with a shout. Their fists clashed in an unchildish warm-up. The blow was hard. Xu Nian flew backwards but managed to stay on his feet. Ji Yuan prepared himself and hoped that his opponent would be defeated or at least fall to the ground. The warrior was very surprised that Xu Nian had steadied himself. This was something he had not expected. All the onlookers were also amazed by the young warrior's resilience. Even the sheriff exclaimed in surprise. Ji Yuan was a strong opponent. Xu Nian asked, probably not expecting his opponent to react this way. And this is only a warm-up. The young man added that his spiritual and physical cultivation was already at the nine-star dimension level. Ji Yuan was surprised at the dual cultivation of spirit and body. Xu Nian is also a refiner and an excellent swordsman. Why hadn't anyone told him about this before? Ji Yuan asked his opponent how old he was. Xu Nian said that he would already be 17 years old in three months. He is already almost an adult. Ji Yuan felt frustrated and exhaled. Was it possible to become such a genius at such a young age? This was not what he had been doing in his time. The green-eyed blonde thought she was only a two-star warrior in her twenties. The wrong direction her development had gone. The sheriff noted the amazing talent this guy has. Ji Yuan angrily said that he had only used 70% of his strength. This was just a warm-up. The next attack would be more powerful. Let's see how Xu Nian can handle it now. The athlete gathered all his will into a fist. This fist he sent again, now with even more fury towards his opponent. Xu Nian appeared ready for this and set up a blocking move, but the blow was powerful, one and a half times stronger, therefore Xu Nian flew backwards. As our hero flew, Ji Yuan uttered that he would show what real speed was. Xu Nian landed on his feet, he steadied himself again and did not fall to the ground. Ji Yuan immediately jumped up to him to continue the fight. He threw a very strong punch which Xu Nian was able to dodge. Ji Yuan executed punch after punch. His opponent couldn't take a break for even a second. The young men were about equally prepared. So at this stage it was hard to see who could win this battle. Ji Yuan raised himself above his opponent, about to apply his hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. Zhu Nian, having figured out his plan, only smirked in response. He already knew what he would do next. Without waiting for his opponent to strike, our hero decided to counterattack and jumped up to strike. Young threw a right jab but his opponent had time to block it, and his fist went off at a tangent. Xu Nian did not stop. His blows came one after another. At some point our hero missed a shot and lost his balance. The blow was so strong that the young man tumbled over himself several times, but he managed to regroup and attempted a series of retaliatory strikes. One of these punches had reached its target. The target was Ji Yuan's jaw. The blow was so strong that the opponent flew through and fell to the ground. Xu Nian announced that his opponent didn't have much of an advantage even after breaking through. He has a little more strength, but he is definitely not faster. Ji Yuan said in response that his opponent was really strong, and even superior to the Silver Moon Warrior. Not only is the difference between them in spiritual strength, qi energy and physical form, but he is even higher than his opponent in level. Zhu Nian responded by telling his opponent to stop bragging and show his full strength already. Ji Wen shouted loudly and activated his energy beast. His energy beast appeared above its master, instilling terror in everyone around him. Everyone said that it was an energy armor qi. Ji Yuan is so powerful that he can already use the powerful qi armor. The spectators also decided that this powerful armor qi was a skill that only a four or five star bodily kin could possess. Ji Wen moved towards his opponent along with his energy armor. Xu Nian knew that he would still beat his opponent. He wouldn't be intimidated by such things. The young man himself began to release powerful charges of energy and direct these flows into his opponent. Ji Wen moved towards his opponent with full confidence that he was about to be completely dealt with. Xu Nian activated the Thunder Lord's fist. The two opponents again delivered powerful blows at each other, and fists met. Their clash continued with renewed vigor. Xu Nian was more agile this time and landed a solid punch to his opponent's stomach. He immediately lost his breath. He flew aside with tremendous force. His landing point was somewhere off the edge of the arena. Ji Wen lay sprawled out in the arena and traditionally thought how such a thing was possible. He lay motionless, and the audience fell silent, waiting for him to continue. Woody Chen told his sister that even after the breakthrough, Ji Yuan was not Xu Nian's opponent. The girl looked at the young man differently now. He began to occupy her heart. Ji Yuan stood there, resting and thinking that he shouldn't lose this fight. He gathered his strength, activated the sword option, and was going to make an attack like that. 
Ji Yuan intercepted his battle sword. He uttered, the sword that opens the mountains. Xu Nian said that he liked warriors who fought with all their might. His battle bone appeared in his hands. The boy swung his bone and prepared to meet his opponent. Ji Wen swung his sword at his opponent with all his might. The blow hit the bone. The young man shouted loudly, hoping to produce a frightening effect. He hoped that Shunian would not be able to withstand such an onslaught now. There was a release of energy at the point where the bone and sword made contact, and the warriors flew away from each other. Ji Wen flew with great speed. It landed with terrible force and a crater formed at the place where it fell. The young man lay still and did not move. It was unclear what was happening to him. Everyone around them was stunned. No one had expected such a turn of events. Dean Len was taken aback. She didn't think her student was capable of such blows. Sister and brother Chen exclaimed in surprise. Shunian's companions were also stunned. Even the sheriff stood up and started applauding. He said that it was a great battle. He didn't expect to see such an amazing talent among the Dongyang country's young people. The spectators in the stands chanted the name of our hero. It was a success. Friends shouted that Xu Nian was number one in the world of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Dogu Jingqing recognized that Xu Nian should rightfully be declared the best warrior in this tournament. The sheriff decided to personally congratulate the winner. The champion, seeing the sheriff above him, remarked that he was very fast. Xu Nian bowed respectfully. The sheriff noted that the young man had surprised him with his performance today. The sheriff personally announced the young man as the winner of the academy competition. Xu Nian and the sheriff were in the arena and all around the spectators were chanting the young champion's name. The sheriff said that in addition to all the rewards, he would break the rules, and Xu Nian could join the military palace today, and held out the military palace token to the young man. Xu Nian eyed the item with curiosity. Everyone around them started talking that the rule allowing only the silver moon dimension to enter the martial palace had been broken. The young man thanked the sheriff for such a gracious gift. The sheriff said that he would send someone to his residence to give him a heaven-level martial skill and a magic golden crystal steel. As for the three-day practice, the young man could come to the palace at any time. The elder announced that Chinling Academy was the winner of the competition. Dean Len accepted congratulations from her colleagues. Xu Nian, looking at his gifts, rejoiced like a child. Heaven-level martial prowess and magical golden crystal steel were very useful. Xu Nian thought for a moment. He decided to ask my lady for one favor. The next day, the students of Chinling Academy told the dean that they wanted to stay. They have already made their decision. They will now proceed to the military palace to report it. The dean wanted to talk to Shunian alone and took him aside. The two of them strolled toward the woods. The dean reminded the young man that she had asked him not to go to the capital. The guy said he remembers everything because his life could be in danger in the capital. The dean said she was at fault for this and asked not to blame her. Shunian said that he had already guessed it but why should he blame the girl? She said she would go back to him in two years, they'll be stronger then, and if he still had that desire, she would go with him to the capital. Shunian was upset that he had to wait for another two years. The young man concluded that meant in two years, they would enter the capital together. The migratory bird took its host to new adventures. Shunian left his dean a gift and asked him to open it on his way home. The girl was surprised by the thing. In the box was a beautiful woman's sword. It was made of magical golden crystal steel. The dean decided that he had been very careful in choosing a gift for her. The three young men approached the military palace. The young men were talking among themselves that they never expected to be able to join the military palace. It is so exciting. Zhu Nian reasoned that he had been banished from the Qin family and was now in the military palace. Failure and adversity go far beyond the imagination of the average person. The young men in the palace approached the receptionist on duty. The girl and everyone asked for name and identity. The young man identified himself as Lin Shifeng from Qinglin Academy. The girl handed him a duffel bag, token, and room keys, the rules inside the bag. The administrator called out the next one. The next one was named Dugu Jingcheng from Qinglin Academy. He also received the same set of items. Next was Junian from Qinglin Academy. The receptionist, hearing his name, was surprised. Did she say that it was the same Shunian with amazing lewdness? Junian was also surprised. What was wrong with him? Why with the lewdness? He's not like that. The young man immediately assumed that the administrator knew about Chen Yao's situation. Does Chen Yao even care about his reputation? The administrator said that she has seen many people chasing Chen Yao and knows all their possible tricks. But this was the first time she had heard of someone using theft to get the girl's attention. The receptionist said that if a young man wanted to seduce Chen Yao, thinking he had a great figure, he should show that figure to her first. Xu Nian didn't know where to hide in this situation. After all, he wasn't like this. 
The girl continued that Chen Yao is the first beauty of the military palace. Her talent and personality are extraordinary. That's why she is popular here. The girl said that many students are courting her. And rumors of your indecent acts have spread throughout the military palace. So many people want to fight you. You should be careful. Xu Nian didn't even believe that it was about him. And someone had already called out to him. The young man looked around and saw a group of students. They were looking for Xu Nian and an adventure for themselves. The young man said it was him, what they want from him. The students said they wanted to see how formidable this young man looked. The student added that it would be better to learn from the elders of the military palace in the future and advised Xu Nian not to wet himself on the battlefield and disgrace the military palace. Xu Nian pretended to be frightened and asked if it had ever happened before that young cadets had urinated in their underpants. The opponent tensed up, didn't know what to say to that. He pounced on Xu Nian and said that a military palace couldn't have people who were afraid to fight. Xu Nian replied, why did they think that the three of them would be afraid on the battlefield? The sheriff was watching all the battles and he gave a reward for entering the military palace. The young man added that the sheriff can't be wrong, or maybe someone here thinks the sheriff has bad eyesight. The student realized six that Xu Nian had beaten and framed him and shouted in anger that the sheriff can't be wrong. He has a very high level of development and excellent eyesight, and the sheriff can't pick the wrong person. Xu Nian summarized that his interlocutor knew how to flatter people. The young man was no longer interested in socializing and said since he was already being looked at, he would go about his business. The bully yelled that he wasn't letting anyone go. Xu Nian asked what else he wanted. The one explained to him that he had better stay away from Junior Marshal's sister Chen Yao. Otherwise, his merit would not help him deal with the problems that had arisen. And he won't hold back if he has to fight Xu Nian in the future. Xu Nian said that anything was possible. But if he were to lose, it would only be because he didn't know martial arts. In fact, the young man said he would do whatever he wanted. The only way to keep him is to break his leg, if I can do that. The bully realized that the young man was continuing to bully him. He said the guy was fed up with life. He was about to rush at the new recruit to settle things in a fistfight, but his companions managed to hold him off. He was kicking and screaming not to be stopped. The receptionist said that all fighting was forbidden in the palace and sent everyone away. The student said that he was letting the recruit go this time, but he must memorize Liu Mushan's formidable name. They will meet again. The students of Qinglin Academy calmly went about their business, paying no heed to this upstart's threats. The administrator was left alone at her battle station. She thought that smart people should realize that Chen Yao lied. But lying works more convincingly. The girl dreamed and decided that Xu Nian had some kind of power and talent. The girl concluded that he was still very young. And that's sad. Xu Nian told his companions that the local guys were very nervous. For himself, Xu Nian decided that he would have a very nervous life in the palace. All three of them, chuckling, went to their rooms. Twenty days had passed. One of the friends was already lying in bandages. Xu Nan asked, how could he have gotten such injuries? The young man told me that he almost died. It was very difficult there. He added that it is reasonable for a military mansion to separate the salary and title into nine stars. They have a rank of one star, and each of them takes on an assignment of the appropriate level. He needed to straighten out the bandits, but was ambushed by a mountain king with a large group of Luo. After receiving four hits, he slew the mountain king who made a breakthrough of two stars in the silver moon dimension. Jing Cheng chased after the big thief and he taunted him, having a lot of experience in Jianghu. If it wasn't for the military mansion's information about his location, they would have definitely died. Zhu Nian said that he had been practicing his martial skills lately and had reached a stalemate. It was probably time for him to fight. The comrade told Zhu Nian that he should be more careful. There's a big mountain fortress there. It was a mistake to rush straight there. We should have made a few checks. Get rid of all the guards and challenge the king of the mountain then it wouldn't have been so frustrating. The guy added that he's really not experienced yet. Shunian said he would draw conclusions, and he will be extremely careful, and won't make the same mistakes. Shunian decided that he would not waste any more time. He said he's already here. The receptionist said the young man was late, and that's inexcusable. Shunian asked why. After all, it's a small delay. The administrator held out the envelopes and said there were challenging missions left. These are all one-star missions with the highest risk of death. Xunian opened his envelope. There was a map with a mission in it. It told you what you had to do and what the reward was. And the following tasks of this challenging mission are indicated in the sequel. Xunian chose the second task. The administrator said it was the most dangerous task. The girl explained that there was one two-star warrior and three one-star fighters in Qingfeng Citadel. This mission was suspended a few months ago. 
Some of the participants had died doing this mission. The administrator suggested that Xu Nian give up and change the assignment. The strength of One Star Warriors won't be enough. If no one completes the task, their level will automatically increase to two stars after 10 years. Xu Nian didn't refuse and said that he had a good chance of completing the task. Liu Mushan appeared suddenly and said that Senior Marshal Sister Zhao did not have to discourage those who wanted to sacrifice themselves at all. He added that he had hoped to fight Hu Nian after he completed his task, but now realizes that it would likely be impossible. Liu Mushan said that it was funny how a new recruit tries to accomplish an impossible task. Xu Nian said that the weak one was the one who was afraid to take on this task. Liu Mushan immediately started threatening Xu Nian with reprisals and other terrible things. The receptionist looked at the upstart reproachfully. Toth told her to forget it. He was embarrassed and blushed. Xu Nian offered a bet that if he survived this task, Liu Mushan would kneel down and admit to looking down on everyone. The one agreed, for he was sure that Xu Nian would not be able to complete the task. Two days later, in Yuzhou City, Xu Nian was calmly sipping tea in a local tavern. The young men were discussing that Miss Zhao had been kidnapped by a gang of heavenly thugs. It's not a fact that she's still alive. The second agreed that all the women who victimized them were dead. The gang of celestial thugs are getting more and more fearless. We need someone to subdue them. The third said that anyone who went against them would die. Ouyang's two gifted sons died. Doesn't anyone want to avenge their deaths? The Ouyang family wants revenge, but Xu Nian has an amazing talent. He enters the military mansion and it will be difficult for the Ouyang family to carry out revenge. Killing members of the military mansion is equated with rebellion. The Ouyang family adopted a foster son. He's worse than those two sons. That son is somewhere here in the tavern right now. One of them said that he had heard that this son knew the leader of a gang of heavenly thugs. He gave his woman to the gang leader. There are no good people in the Ouyang family. There will be no peaceful life in this city. This town belongs to the Ouyang family. Something could happen sooner or later. Zhu Nian listened to this and decided that the task looked more difficult than it seemed at first glance. First, we must meet with the master of Yuzhou City. At night, someone appeared on the roof of the building at the city master's mansion. The guards below were discussing something. The masked stranger decided that the guards were being rather careless. He stealthily made his way to the main door to the mansion. The girl kneels in front of her father and says that she doesn't want to marry Ouyang Lon. The father replies that he doesn't want that either, but there's nothing he can do to help his daughter. The girl said that Ouyang Lon was a very bad man. He gave his ex-wife to the leader of a gang of heavenly thugs. It's unknown if she's still alive. The old man cries and says there is nothing he can do. The girl still has two younger brothers. Suddenly someone said that the old man shouldn't sacrifice his daughter. He could help with that. The master asked who it was and how did he get here. The stranger said it didn't matter who he was. The important thing is that he came to help. The young man presented his military badge. It was the password. It was immediately clear that he was a good man and had come here with good intentions. The man introduced himself and said his name was Yang Xuan and apologized just in case. The stranger said he had to take down a gang of sky thugs. The young man came to talk about the award. Yang Xuan said that he was the one who announced the reward for this Gang 7. He was surprised that the young man wanted to accomplish this task alone. The young man exposed himself by removing his mask and asked if the master experienced any discomfort at night. The old man was surprised and asked how the young man knew about it. Xu Nian, and it was him, said that he was the only one right now who could save his daughter. The old man told his daughter to go back to her room. Yang Xuan interrogated if the young man could really save him and his daughter. The young man mysteriously said that getting rid of the cold viper venom in his body was real. If one did what he said, not only would it neutralize the poison, but it would also help one break through to the Zhuantian stage. The old man said that if the young man would really help get rid of the poison in his body and save his daughter, then he solemnly promises to become a lifelong faithful follower of the young benefactor. Xu Nian said, let's not delay and start getting rid of the poison right now. The old man was surprised. To do so, we should sit in a meditation posture and concentrate our energy. The old man did it right. Xu Nian then called out to his mentor, my lady, to help him and tell him what to do next. Milady announced that this was the last time she would help him. From now on, he would solve his problems on his own. Milady showed the young man how to cast a spell on the old man to have an effect. The boy twirled his finger near the old man's forehead. The old man was meditating, and then he cried out. He announced that he was feeling better, and the snake venom had been neutralized. The old man bowed and said he was now a debtor. Xu Nian said that one must now start working on one's martial techniques. One must reach the Chuantian stage. 
the young man leaned his finger on the old man's forehead again and said that he should think about what his martial techniques lacked. Soon, he would be able to break through to the Zhuantian stage. The old man was shocked. How could this be possible? In such a short time, the young man was able to find a flaw in his techniques and made changes. The old man thought that the young man was able to use true spirit to transfer information into his mind. Only masters at the saint stage could do such a thing. The young man has such enigmatic and extraordinary skills. The old man shouted that he had finally had a breakthrough. The old man thanked Xu Nian and said that he, Yang Wuwei, would follow his leader everywhere. Xu Nian said that the old man is a very good person. There are no thoughts that should not arise because of the increase in strength. Xu Nian added that otherwise, the seeds of spiritual knowledge he passed on would be something more than just a deep knowledge of a martial arts. It could also become a life-threatening blade. All right, let's get down to business. Xu Nian continued and said, Please tell me the specific situation of the Yuyang family and the Jiantian gang. The old man said that according to the Jiantian gang, there should be no mistakes in the information found by Jian Fu. The Yuyang family is basically behind the Jiantian gang, except that the head of the family, Yuyang Tian, belongs to the Nine Star Wars sect. Among them, there are more than ten strong men of the clan Civil War. The old man added that in addition, the Yuyang family also has two ancestors both of whom are general Xuantian level masters. One has one star, the other has two stars. They can already walk sideways in Yuzhou city. Yang Wuwei added that moreover there is another mysterious force controlling the Yuyang family. If necessary, significant foreign aid will be sent to help the Yuyang family. Xu Nian said that the two generals Xuantian, mysterious forces. In the beginning, Qin Yunshan was afraid of the Yuyang family like a tiger because, the young man added, Support the Uyang family. The Uyang family supports the Jantian gang and play with the Matryoshka dolls. What are they planning? Yang Zui said that they had kept this secret very carefully and had never divulged it for many years. But before the Jantian gang occupied Qingliang Mountain, a brief rumor passed. Xuantia's veins were discovered on Qingliang Mountain. Xu Nen exclaimed, These are black iron veins. This is a resource controlled by the Empire. The young man knew that the highest officials at the county level had to report to the Empire, and most of the spoils should be given to the Empire. They are so brave. A servant came running in and said that something bad had happened. Ao Yang Lun came and went to the door and wanted to forcefully take the woman away. Yang Wu Wei shouted that he had had enough of the bullying. Xu Nian offered to meet with this U Yang Lun. He stood in the square and shouted curses. He said he was the coolest guy in the place and everyone should listen to him. Uyang Lun said that he didn't care if she wanted to or not, but Yan Ruyu must go with him today. He said that if the girl still dared to say no, he would do it today in front of everyone. The girl said that Uyang Lun is very unscrupulous. Uyang Lun said that he would let you see what true shamelessness looked like. He turned to the servants. Press her against this stone table. This young master will open your eyes today. The servants moved to carry out the order. The girl shouted that her master would be here soon. The young mistress was very frightened and said that her father would come and punish the insolent man. Uyang Lun said that her worthless father wouldn't even dare to show his face here. The servant said that the father was not coming and hit the maid in the face. The girl fell down. The girl popped and Uyang Lun said she could scream all she wanted. No one would hear her. The young lady asked not to be touched. The servants did not listen and grabbed the girl. Xu Nin appeared. He asked, who is Uyang Lun? Why doesn't he come quickly to meet his great benefactor? Uyang Lun started shouting that he was about to deal with the old man. The old man didn't wait long and prepared to kick that rascal's ass. Xu Nian said that Yang Wu Wei was able to solve this problem by himself. The old man realized that he had his hands free and could do whatever he wanted to this bastard, and nothing would be done to him. Yang Wu Yi and Uyang Lun faced off in a serious fight, the price of which, the young lady's honor. The old man knocked the bastard out with the first punch. He didn't expect his opponent to be so quick. His head snapped back. The servants watched their master, tumbling, going for a landing. The old man said that Yang Wu Wei had been promoted to Xuan Tian Zhang. Uyang Lun asked in consternation how this could be. He hadn't counted on such an unwelcoming reception in this house. He said he was the adopted son of the head of the Ouyang family. If he dares to be offended, his foster father will never forgive him. Xu Nan repeated that he was his great benefactor, and he should thank him for being his adopted son. Uyang Lun asked, what else is there to be thankful for? Xu Nian said that Ouyang Tianlun and Ouyang Chengfeng died by his hand. That's why he has the opportunity to become Ouyang Tian's adopted son. The scoundrel cried out in fear. He realized that it was Xu Nian himself. The old man thought that they were in a mess since they had met Xu Nian. 
He said he had to deliver the news to the master's house immediately. He wanted to leave immediately. Xu Nian and Yang Wuwei only saw him. He flew away very quickly. Xu Nan said that it would be necessary to straighten him out. The old man agreed. Wu Yang Lun, realizing that he didn't have long to live, started screaming in fear and begging for protection. Yang Wu Wei caught up with the old man and decided that it was time to finish with him. The old man, realizing this, screamed loudly. It was a cry of despair. Yang Wu Wei pounced at him, not wanting to listen to him and not intending to spare him. It wasn't a struggle. The old man could offer no resistance. Xu Nian and Lu Yin Lun turned around. They saw Yang Wu Wei dragging his foe by the head. He was finished. The girl was surprised. She hadn't expected this from her father. Wu Yang Lun begged to be spared and urinated profusely under himself out of fear. The flying blade was near the head of the peeing lover. He was afraid to blink an eye. Zhu Nian said, as the latter answered everything he asked. Otherwise, when he first started practicing flying swords, his hand would slip a little, and that was normal. The first question is, is the Zhanqin gang the strength of their Ouyang family? Ouyang Lun said that yes, their Ouyang family secretly supports it. Yuan Xiong, the leader of the Zhantian gang, is also an elder of their Ouyang family. The young man asked, What is the purpose of the Ouyang family? Ouyang Lun blanched and silently stared at the blade in front of his eyes. He confessed there was a large black iron vein on Qingliang Mountain. At first glance, the Zhantian gang robbed families and houses, but they were actually mining. The old man repeated, A big black iron ore vein? You Ouyang family are so brave. Xu Nian said that if you were discovered, it would be a disaster for the entire clan. How can they do that? Who's supporting you from the outside? Wu Yang Lun said he doesn't know, but he met his foster father while secretly meeting someone. No one knows who this person is, and his target is not this black iron mine. Xu Nian asked, Is this what is inside the mine? He doesn't know the details either. But one day he heard his foster father talking about the cemetery of a saint. The men were surprised to hear about the saint's cemetery. Xu Nian realized that this matter now looked much more serious. Wu Yang Lun kneeled down and said that he has already given away all the bases, everything he knows. Could he go home already? Xu Nian let him go. The one immediately turned around and ran faster than the hare so that no one would change his mind. He couldn't get far. A monster bird bent over his head. The last thing he saw was the yellow beak of this bird. The bird swallowed him whole like a small worm. Yang Wu Wei and his daughter were shocked by what they saw. This was new to them. The bird chirped something, and Xu Nian held a magic ring in his hand to control this monster. Xu Nian told the bird to be careful with this worm this time. It might not be tasty. The young man decided to go up the mountain by steps. There were many of them, but he did not count them. In front of him was a tall fence with a huge gate. The guard shouted the traditional in such cases. Stop! Who's coming? Wu Yang Lun shouted something loudly in response and told him to quickly open the gate. The guard decided that the man was being very arrogant. He said to have the captain down by the gate to check to see who had come in. The captain was a little puzzled. Wu Yang Lun snapped back that they wouldn't even recognize their young master, and said to hurry up and let him pass. Mr. Wu Yang, why can you come and help me, Zhang Tian? Didn't I tell you that you plan to get married in these two days? She is still the most beautiful woman in Yuzhou City. Wu Yang Lun began to say that he had been treated badly and had come here to rest for a while. The big man said that their Zhang Tian gang had enough supplies. But only Mr. Wu Yang can get high-quality products. He said they're a bunch of rough guys who rob women every day. What good ones you can meet. This Ao Feng is actually wearing black iron armor. Indeed, you can only do this if you have a landmine at home. Talking, they approached the square. Ao Feng, what took you so long? Ao Yang was recognized and offered to join them. The master announced that new cuties had arrived today. The young master came at just the right time. The sad girls stood around. They could not yet perceive reality normally. It was very hard for them. Wu Yang Lun recognized one girl and called her by name. Wang Xu? Did she go to school at Qinglin College? Wu Yang Lun asked. Why is she here? The young man said he'd rather come here another time. He had more important things to do. The girl saw him and it was too late to leave. So he went up to her and said that she looked good now. The master said that Wu Yang could choose one girl. His older brother had recently gained stunning beauty and now he was not interested in other women at all. Wu Yang confirmed that the girls were amazingly good today. One of the people present said that strangely enough, this girl had come here on her own initiative. He added that she is full of a misty fairy spirit and her appearance is extremely beautiful. That graceful body is the best among women I have ever seen. Don't blame his older brother for being in seclusion lately. It's just that it's to practice pair perfecting with her. Wu Yang thought about it and didn't pay attention to the narrator's words. 
He came to his senses and said he was very interested in all this and was listening intently. The warrior suggested we leave the talking and enjoy these beauties. This one, for example, he suggested to Ouyang. He agreed and said he would only take her. He was not interested in the others. The man said that this woman's beauty is indeed the best among all. I originally thought of marrying her myself, but since Master Ouyang likes her, he will give her to him. Taking the other girl away with him, this warrior said it takes wine and girls to enjoy. Nothing else. Ouyang Lan muttered that the moments of a spring night spent together with this girl were worth thousands of gold. Leading her to his room, he told her to give him her smile and be gentle with him. When they entered the room, Ouyang Lan hit the girl and she lost consciousness. The guy laid her on her back and told her she'd know how to get out of here when she came to her senses. Just then, the man took off his mask, and it turned out that it wasn't Ouyang Lan at all. It was Shu Nian who wore a mask with his face on it, and the bandits didn't recognize him. The young man said that he had snuck in here to destroy all the villains. The young man heard a girl screaming from the next room. She was asking for help. The villain tried to possess the girl and told her she could scream all she wanted. No one would come to help her, and crying won't help her. Shunan threw his flying dagger towards that rapist. The weapon flew straight at the villain's bald head. He noticed, but it was too late to do anything about it. The dagger stabbed him in the face. Blood spurted in all directions. Our hero burst in next and with sword in hand rushed straight at the villain. He pierced the villain's chest in a single movement. He could do nothing in surprise. He only cried out in pain. Shunyan thrust his sword deeper and with such force that the villain flew far back. The girl watched with tears in her eyes. She could not believe that she had been saved. Our hero pointed a finger to keep quiet, so as not to give himself away early. The villain was still alive, and asked who the brave young man was who had stormed fearlessly into their lair. Shunian said, It doesn't matter who he is. He just needs to say, Is there a big black iron ore vein at the back of the mountain? The young man, still wielding his sword, asked where Yuan Xiong was. The villain, writhing in pain, said that he was behind a mountain. Baldi added that the gang leader was behind the mountain, where there was a cave specially prepared for him. He's hiding there now. He asked Shunian not to kill him and spare him. Shunian didn't do anything. The flying dagger did it all for him, which split the villain's skull and impaled him. The young man grabbed the girl's hand and they decided to change their dislocation. Shunian led the girl to her sleeping friend, asking her to keep an eye on her. He said he would continue his mission to rescue all the other captives. The girl thanked the guy for his mercy and said that from now on, he was her hero. Junian decided to choose a strategy where he would eliminate all the villains from weak to strong, one by one. The next villain was in the third girl's room. The young man didn't have any ceremony with him either. He dealt with him with his long sword. The young lady all in tears could not believe that she had already been saved, and it would only get easier from here on. Shunin calmed her down and said that he would deal with all the guffaws and the world would be a kinder place for the girl. The guy heard some extraneous noises. One of the villains burst into the room, attracted by the strange noise. He tried to deal with the liberator of the girls, but Shu Nian was prepared for such twists and turns. The villain, seeing the young man's age, asked what kind of boy he was, who had already massacred his two brothers. Doesn't he know that this is a very dangerous den of villains? Shu Nian said that he was doing everything quietly and would now try to quietly deal with this villain. How did the man know that there was trouble with his brothers in the rooms? He replied that the rooms were very quiet. That's not the way it is when his brothers spend time with girls. It's not normal. Junan said that his lack of experience was affecting him. He would be more prudent next time. The villain shouted that there would be no next time as this boy was about to die. No one had ever gotten away from him before. Junian drew his sword and they began a bloody battle. This wasn't like the battle in the academy arena. This was the real thing. The villain was doing his best, but so far he hadn't been able to teach the young man a lesson. Something wasn't working for him. The villain chuckled and thought it was just a game after all. He could beat this guy at any time. He said he wears black armor. None of Auchi's guards could wear such luxuries. He laughed and said that the young man probably didn't expect it to be like this. Shunian began to say something about justice and punishing the wrongdoers, and added that he would try to restore order in this city. The young man said that if the sword doesn't take his armor, he'll try another weapon. I'd really like to defeat this bastard. The one was surprised at the bone armor. The guy's probably not all at home. Shunian decided to stop debating and struck the villain with a bone in a leap. His bone snapped his opponent's sword in half, leaving him no weapon to defend himself. The next bone hit his opponent in the chest. That was very powerful. He flew out of the room. Shunian said that with all their things like armor, he would always have things to defeat the enemy. 
the young man heard some extraneous noise again. He looked around and saw already many armed villains wanting to deal with him permanently. They were followed by one of their leaders who said that since the guy dared to massacre the gang members, then the other members of that gang would surely fight back, and the guy would not survive today. The armed bandits pounced on Shunyan with shouts and decided to destroy him completely. The guy only smirked in response. He knew this was their strategic mistake. If he had a bone in his hand, any sword would be powerless. A scramble ensued. The villains waving their swords, the young man fighting back with a bone and crushing the attackers one by one. Everyone was horrified. How could it be possible to behave like that without a sword? The older one asked who the young man was. They didn't seem to have offended such a badass melee master and bone specialist before. Shunian said that he is Jiang Fu's dick. He's a really cool guy. The villains said that they would deal with him anyway because they don't forgive wrongs. You can't be so fearless with them. The villain shouted to an aide to inform the gang leader that there was a mess going on. The deputy gladly ran away from this mayhem. The villain said the guy is strong and only two people can compete with him. Him and his brother. So he suggested we choose a larger place to fight. Xu Nin, leaving behind the defeated bodies of the enemies, agreed to change the battlefield and said that their leader should have enough speed to get here faster and have time to save the lives of the remaining ones. The survivors decide that Shunian is pretty terrible and it's time to quit banditry. Maybe they should switch to farming. The villain was sitting near the wall and his mouth was bleeding directly onto his beard. He clung to life with his last strength and said that only a monster could have done this to him. The warrior tried once more to oppose Shunian, but nothing came of it. And he fell to his knees exhaustedly, uttering that there was nothing he could do against the boy and his bone. The villain said his hands were shaking and asked me to give him until tomorrow morning. He still has some unresolved issues. The other villain decided to pay him off and started offering a lot of money. He said that even if the young man was from the military palace, he was also working for a reward. Zhu Nian asked, Where are the other girls who were bullied by these villains? The villain said they were all already dead. The young man said that now all the villains would have to follow their victims. Zhu Nian had already taken a swing, but the opponent asked to be left alive. He might be able to do some good. After all, he is a master of the Silver Moon Two-Star Realm. Zhu Nian decided to stop, but it was too late the bone had done its job. The young man heard someone call out to him again. It was an older villain, and he began to shout that this rascal boy had massacred his two brothers. He was furious, and said he would destroy the enemy completely now. The bandit thrust his huge fist forward and shouted as he began to massacre the young man. The boy began to defend himself with his bone, and the big man could do nothing to him. He didn't understand how to defeat his opponent. The bandit saw that his opponent withstood all his powerful blows, which as a result did not reach the target. He realized that he was fighting a real master. The villain looked at Xu Nian and said that he really didn't expect such a thing from such a young lad. There was a girl in the room who said she was willing to meet Xu Nian elsewhere. The young man said that he didn't expect to meet big sister Lin in the villain's den. The villain asked if the beauty knew this stranger. The girl said he was a bad man and we should call for backup to deal with him. The bandit shouted that if Xu Nian offended his beauty, he would chop the man into pieces. The bully added that his fists are invincible and know no defeat. Look how big and strong they are. After that, the bulky man pointed one of his fists towards the young man. He easily dodged the clumsy big man and drove his invincible bone right into his jaw. The bandit was surprised by the guy's behavior and slumped to the floor. This was definitely something he didn't expect. It was a knockdown. The villain lamented why senior sister Lin didn't warn him that this guy was so strong and should be more careful with him, and it was better to avoid him. Xu Nin told the girl that his arms and legs were very weak and his strength had dropped a lot. The girl said that a medicine should be used. She added that he was the master of the Silver Moon Realm at the peak of the Three Stars. And he helped them a lot. Xu Nan thanked Sister Lin for her help and said that they would still remember the old days. There were some hooligans huddled to the side. Xu Nian said that he still had to deal with this Jantian gang completely. The girl told the young man not to worry and went on with his mission. The gang of badass thugs kneeled before Xu Nian and begged him to forgive them and spare them. Xu Nian said that they would now follow his orders and that they should kill the gang leader Tian Tian and viciously execute him. He would summon the government troops here to take over the place. Xu Nian warned that if they gathered again to commit atrocities, they would suffer the same fate as their leader. They said they would listen and obey. Xu Nian said that if there were more girls to be saved, then let them wait a little longer. Sister Lin said that Xu Nian is a young man with a very big and kind heart, and her sister likes him a lot. 
the young man landed his flying machine and told the girls that the eagle would take them to the city of Yuzhou, and they would be safe there. The main thing was not to get seasick on the flight. The girl said that she did not expect to be saved. She was very touched by the young man's act. Junian said that he had disguised himself as Wu Yang Lun to infiltrate the enemy's lair. He didn't expect to meet her here. Therefore, he didn't give himself away in an emergency. He hoped for understanding. The girl said she was fine and understood everything. She was just really scared. Junian wished them a good flight and said that he had some other things to do here. They didn't have to worry about him. The girl said that she hoped to meet Shunian in the future. The young man looked after the flying eagle and thought that now the girls were safe. Sister Lin said that he just let his pet go like that. Isn't he afraid that she might destroy it? Shunin asked. Her target is the saint's graveyard under the Shuangye mine on Qingliang Mountain. It was the only reason for him to stay alive. The girl said he was so kind and so smart. She's drooling over a guy like that. Why don't he go with her? She promises he'll have a good time and promises not to drink his blood. The girl had forgotten that he wasn't like that, so she was upset at his refusal again. Chun Yen said that he didn't have the blessing for such deeds. The young man said that deeds come first and he has a mission to fulfill. The boy asked Sister Lin, is it true that there is a tomb of saints in the heart of this mountain? The girl said that Yuan Xiong had once led her here. Therefore, one should just silently follow her now. Xunin said that if the Wu Yang family had discovered them, they could have discovered them on their own long ago. Sister Lin said that they couldn't break the restrictions left by the saints. Xunin said that maybe they could work something out. What the young man saw really startled him. In front of them was a huge gate with the image of animals. The young man had not expected to see such a grandiose structure in the cave. The girl said that now they still have to deal with the problem of opening that gate. The young man said that we should now use all ideas to try to solve this problem. Sister Lin said that this problem with the restriction of the doors can be solved with spiritual consciousness. One who has spiritual consciousness close to the level of a saint will be able to open the tomb gate. Junian decided that he might be able to do it. We should try it now. The girl said they each had half of that consciousness. If they joined their efforts, they might be able to do it. Shunian thought that once this door opened, he would be useless. It would be great to massacre villains and silence them, only to steal the treasure. Sister Lin said that the young man has admirable talent, bloodline, and fortitude at the top of his game. The girl announced that it was not to straighten out the young man now. It means destroying the hen that lays the eggs, so the boy has nothing to worry about. The girl said that the Ouyang family might come at any moment, so it's better to join hands and open this gate as soon as possible. The young man said that he hoped that Sister Lin would keep her feelings and not think very badly of him. They opened the gate with their combined efforts, and a huge sarcophagus appeared before them. The girl was surprised that this tomb had no other defenses besides a powerful restriction. It seemed to be merely a threshold setting, not a pure tomb where the entrant must perish. Xu Nin noticed that the location was chosen on the edge of Jinshan Mountain, Wu a large black iron mine. Xu Nian saw the black iron sword. They were all made of this material. The girl said it would be good if the treasure was hidden in this sarcophagus. They cautiously approached the sarcophagus. So far, everything was going well. The young man tried to move the lid. It was very heavy, as it should be in such cases. When the lid was pulled back, a huge fire monster flew out of the sarcophagus. Shunian cried out that it was dragon energy. The boy thought he would see bones at the bottom of the sarcophagus. There was a small green dragon statue. The girl said that this figurine was made of phoenix blood and purple gold, and added that it was the blood and soul of a nine-headed dragon with Jiao scales made of exquisite jade. It holds the imperial fortune of the last dynasty for thousands of years. Shunian was surprised to hear about the nine-headed dragon with scales. The descendants of the Taichu Qianlong bloodline were lucky to be in the dynasty. This is the imperial seal of the previous dynasty. Sister Lin threw the statue to the young man and said, It's not the real thing. It's a fake, but it's very well made. The girl said that she was taking the soft armor for herself. The jade seal and black gold swords the young man can keep. Zhu Nian agreed with this distribution of the treasures found. The girl tried on an outfit of this armor and asked the young man how she looked in it. The guy said it wasn't bad, but in this case, good looks are secondary. Xu Nian said that she should wear this soft armor and not say anything to General Xuantian about it. It would be difficult for a strong man of the prince's level to deal with her. The girl said that now nothing scares her in this outfit and she can go anywhere. My lady told Xu Nian to take his time. There are real valuables hidden underfoot here, not far away. 
Shunan was surprised. A mute question froze on his lips. Milady confirmed that there was a really good item hidden there. The young man pulled out his multitasking bone and hacked the hole apart. Milady was right. It turned out to be a gravity ring. Depending on the user's ability, you can create 10,000 times more gravity within 100 meters of the epicenter. We should have left faster. These black swords could be exchanged for some money. But if the Ouyang family found them here, their lives would be forfeit. Shunyan, however, decided that these swords were a huge amount of money. Sister Lin beckoned the young man toward the exit of the cave. Shunyan was surprised that she was still here. He thought that the girl would run away as soon as she took her things. The boy tensed. After all, there were people standing on the other side of the cave. They were people he wouldn't want to meet. But it was too late. It was clear that it would be too late to find out what was going on. Elder Uyang, and it was he, said that the young men could surrender all the treasures from the Tomb of the Saints, and he would spare their lives. It would avoid unnecessary bloodshed. The young man was revealed. Someone recognized him and called his name. Uyang Middle told his grandfather that both of his grandsons had died at the hands of that scoundrel. The grandfather shouted that it was the Chunyan. In that case, even if they handed over the treasure, they would not escape retribution. The old man told his warriors to deal with everyone except Chunyan. He would destroy him with his own hands. Uyang was hysterical. He was screaming for Shunan to bring his sons back to life. The young man tensed up. He had decided that if the Uyang family applied all their skills now, they would be unfortunate. They would be doomed. The young man turned on his brainstorm and diligently searched for a way to avoid defeat and not part with the treasure. Sister Lin was more prepared. She pulled out the stashed mechanical wings with a pyrotechnic setup with the latest version of software on board. She mounted all this equipment on her back, told Shunian not to memorialize her and flew upwards on her external combustion jet engine. She spread her wings, shouted that she hoped to see Shunian again, and flew off to go about her feminine business, leaving the guy to deal with the problem himself. The young man, realizing that he had been betrayed, screamed with resentment, and he was afraid that he was about to get a beating. Uyang shouted as well, but it was a shout urging his companions to go on the attack. The Uyang family stood there wondering what to do next. Uyang said that he didn't think to see such a flying treasure on this girl. A young man doesn't have such a thing, does he? Xunyan began to turn the tables and said to follow the girl. She took all the treasures for herself. He has nothing, he's been cheated. Uyang said it won't go far. It won't have enough charge. The Uyangs are a powerful family. That's why they'll get it from under the ground even. The old man said that Xunyan should go to the other world today. He, Ouyang Tian, will personally take care of it. And that no one should interfere. Fire formed around Ouyang. It soared upward, ready to deliver its crushing blow. Xunyan was ready. He wasn't used to it. Uyang used all his strength and energy to move towards his opponent. Xunyan managed to put the magic ring on his finger. The ring glowed and was ready for action. All functions activated. The old man pointed his charged hand in his opponent's direction. The young man activated ten times gravity. Grandpa was getting hard. Xunyan realized that he had a chance. He took out his magic bone. The guy used the triple hammer mode and brought the bone down on the head of his chained opponent. The young man breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed to have worked out. Patriarch Ouyang was lying motionless. Xunyan, using his advanced technology, dealt with the supplicant. The remaining Ouyans were frightened and did not know how to behave further with the young man. Everyone shouted that the Nine Stars Silver Moon Realm had been destroyed. Xunyan thought, Even if you are prepared for this change in gravity, you will vomit blood. My body, which is both a physical practitioner and a god, feels like my internal organs are about to vomit. But that can only be a surprise. It's going to die next anyway. The old man began to call his son Asyu. He shouted that he was going to massacre the rascal. Shunian was gripped by tension and he shouted as well. The old man swung a trained palm at the guy's chest. Shunan flew for a long time and landed somewhere under a mountain in the forest area. A cloud of dust showed the epicenter of the landing. There was a rumble. The young man struggled to get out from under the rubble. This had never happened to him since he had left the Chin family. The guy looked hurt. Blood was trickling from his mouth. He was surprised he was in this mess. The old man, watching the young man get out and realizing that he was still on his feet, said it was impossible. No one gets up after such a blow. Everyone had decided that no one could resist after General Xuantian's strike. It's unbelievable. The general shouted in rage. Why couldn't he handle the young man using his entire palm? It was like a slap to him, the old man said. Let's see if Shunian survives this time. 
When he was about to deliver his crushing blow, he heard someone from above yell at him to stop. If anyone touched the members of the warhouse, all their families would be destroyed. The old man lowered his hand, raised his head and saw a huge bird above him. The sheriff jumped down from the bird and said that Ouyang Guangfeng had deceived the superiors. His family had hidden the mysterious iron ore veins and secretly excavated them. According to the law, the mines should be confiscated and the family destroyed. Ouyang Guangfeng didn't expect to see the sheriff here. The sheriff said there were witnesses who saw that the Ouyang family wanted to destroy a member of the military home. The sheriff asked if he was pleading guilty. Around the sheriff landed the special forces that had arrived with him. Ouyang said the sheriff is operating on anecdotal evidence, and there is no proof. The Ouyang family is a very law-abiding family, and we honor the code and the rule of law. Ouyang said that this youngster once killed my only two legitimate grandchildren, and today he sneakily killed my son, Ouyang Tian. Even though my son Ouyang Longsheng, my newly adopted son, has never seen anyone dead or dying, I suspect that he too has fallen into his hands. He has hatred for this guy, and it doesn't matter if he is a member of the military house. The old man said that the Ouyang family had nothing to blame. Shunian began his story. He said it was a letter written by Ouyang Lun in collusion with the Janchen gang occupying Suantian Mine. Please read it. The old man began to twist and say that it was Ouyang Lun's fault, and that he was the one who went against the family. Ouyang added that unfortunately, there is such a traitor in his family. Therefore, he hopes for honesty in the investigation and thinks that his family will not be punished. The sheriff looked sternly at his interlocutor. Ouyang said that tomorrow, his entire family would move to the capital and become a full vassal family. The sheriff thought that the Yamaha Emperor could use another vassal family. The men talked among themselves and thought they had gotten off easy. The sheriff wished the Ouyang family a bright future and great accomplishments. Ouyang thanked the sheriff for the warm words and said he was bowing out. The sheriff decided not to see them off. The migratory birds took everyone to their location. Shunian asked the sheriff, who was this aristocratic Yi family representing Emperor Wudishan in the capital? The sheriff said that there were four major families living in the capital besides the emperor. All of these families have produced emperor-level masters. The foundation is extremely deep and the legacy is great, and there are several saint-level masters in the clan. Children from such aristocratic families often borrow outside resources and earn extra money. But as long as this is made public, the imperial court will take over and return the country to the state. They can only give up. Zhu Nian, your reward for being the first to receive three days of guidance from me in the college competition should be well deserved. This time you will return to complete the mission, recover from your injuries, and then find me. In addition to guiding you in your practice, I also need your help with something. Xu Nen wondered. Why would the sheriff need his help? The sheriff said he'd explain everything later. The invisible man is in trouble and he needs help. The sheriff added that with the invisible man, they are good friends, and he will not shy away from helping him. He is waiting for Xu Nian to recover. Zhu Nian arrived at the military palace and approached the receptionist to turn in his assignment. The receptionist said to sign off and go to accounting for the award. The girl said that Xu Nan went to the Jantan gang, disarmed it, and reported the Black Iron Vein. He would be given a special award for high merit and promoted to a two-star member. Everyone was talking about this guy, who he was and what he'd done to get promoted to two stars. Xu Nian faced the upstart. He recognized Xu Nian and asked where he was from back. The receptionist reminded him that it was Liu Mushuang. Zhu Nian said that he had lost the bet to him, and now he must kneel in front of Yeno's house and stand there for three days. Liu Mushuang realized that he had lost. It was unpleasant for him. Liu Mushuang didn't know what to say to his friends. He started to twist around and say it was a joke bet, and suggested that it be cancelled. Zhu Nian said that he was a new recruit back then, and the man mocked him and laughed at him. For no reason at all, and it wasn't Zhu Nian's suggestion. Xu Nan said that he was willing to admit defeat, if he had lost. Mu Shuang shouted that he was deceiving others too much. Xu Nian said that the opponent should admit defeat. Mu Shuang shouted, since Xu Nian wanted him to kneel, he should die. The young man managed to dodge the attacker's blow at the last moment. Mu Shuang shouted furiously that he was ruthless and harsh. Our hero calmly grabbed his opponent's arm. He did a special move, and Mu Shuang was defeated and lying on the floor. It was a painful technique. Therefore, Mushuang screamed in pain. Tears of remorse flowed from his eyes. Mushuang's associate shouted for Shunian to stop. Shunian asked, why didn't he yell stop when Mushuang started? The interlocutor said that one should know the measure and not offend high school students. Shunian asked if the Silver Moon War Sect would be able to take care of him, a newcomer to the Star Realm. Mushuang said he was going to destroy him. 
Shunian asked if everyone had heard that. The young man added that there was nothing left for him to do now. Yi Shunian crushed his opponent's head with his foot. Everyone was horrified by what they saw. The receptionist was shocked by Shunian's behavior. Someone rushed at the guy with a shout, shouting out that he had actually destroyed Mushuang in front of him. Shunian only smirked in response. The young man also shouted something threatening to let his opponent know he wasn't afraid. Our hero stepped aside and the opponent flew past. The receptionist stood in front of them and told them to stop immediately. The warrior shouted that it wasn't worth defending a cadet who was so ruthlessly destroying everyone. The administrator said that Xu Nian was defending himself in self-defense. Mu Shuang was the first to start. But Mu Shuang will not be punished for the attack, as he has already been punished. But she can punish this warrior for attacking a colleague in the military palace. This one wouldn't stop shouting that Xu Nian had openly committed it. Why save him? The administrator said that the Fire Phoenix team should have enough respect. The warrior realized he was at fault and angry that there was nothing he could do, only mumbled in response. He said that he would postpone solving this problem today. Today, the administrator can protect Shunian today, but she won't be able to do it for the rest of her life. The warriors left without accomplishing anything. The warrior meditated and visualized himself near a tree. He stands under a tall tree, and the wind quietly ruffles the leaves. My lady said it was the fairy king Loris. He contemplated the valley quietly, and no one could disturb him. Milady added that this young man really has the potential to become an immortal king. Enhanced visions are rare, but he is still the best. He said it's a powerful force. Shunian said that it wasn't true. Milady added that it was not true strength. The girl said that this fairy king Laurel figure, when the elephant is released, she will be able to double the fighting power. Shunian said that his combat power had already been doubled. He asked the empress, what exactly was this talent and vision? My lady said that such a vision is the manifestation of an extremely high talent. Both spiritual and physical development have their own special constitution. It is very difficult to cultivate a body of great spiritual constitution. In the future, your Kowloon Supreme Body will also be born with innate visions. But your Kowloon Supreme Body is too powerful. Yes, it is assumed that it will not appear for a long time. The Empress also said that your spiritual practice is not some special constitution. But because you practiced the Qinglian Danhan method. Now Xu Nian has the body of an immortal king. The young man interjected, Was this really the body of an immortal king? Milady said that this is not the limit. In the future, his development would only improve. His talent and vision would continue to grow and would not be as steady as ordinary talent and vision. This was the magical effect of Dant Zhuan Qinglian, a battle challenging the heavens and changing fate. Xu Nian said, the blessing of this talent and vision turns out to be so powerful. I wonder when his Kowloon Supreme Body will awaken. The young man thought that he would have to wait for all the Jolong bloodlines to awaken. Milady said he would have no luck here now, but they would talk about it later. This dragon spirit mark might give the young man a place in Kowloon. Shunian relaxed and began to meditate. He inhaled the scents emitted by the seal. It was the spirit of the dragon. Shunian decided that his eyes had gained magic power. He can now see through illusions, and can also see directly people into a psychedelic state and fall asleep. He can also cooperate with spiritual consciousness to attack the soul of the enemy. Milady asked, why is this supreme divine body of the nine-headed dragon so rebellious? In the future, there will be six kinds of dragons capable of absorbing qi. Shunian said that after being promoted in the Silver Moon War sect, he would be able to ask the governor for advice. Shunian heard someone asking for help. Doug Jingcheng is being beaten up by someone very badly. Shunian asked, what's going on? In the square, two young men were having an argument. They stood opposite each other. A girl was sitting on the ground next to them. The guy says he cut off the hand holding the sword and he's still stubborn. Does he really want to die here to make him feel bad? The young man said that he could only touch this girl if he could handle him. No other options. The young man's hand was cut off. The opponent said that he, Hu Lun, has always been able to get the girl he wants. So the young man may not exaggerate his abilities. He added that he was just teaching a lesson since they were all members of the military house. He didn't expect Dugu Jingcheng to be so ignorant. But if the latter wanted to die, he would help him. The servant said that his battle master Hu Lun is the nephew of the county guard chief and his fighting strength is extraordinary. The servant kept saying that there was no point in resisting. There's no point in saving this girl. Her fate is sealed. Dugu Jingchen said that enough talk if they want to, let them attack. He will fight. The villain said he's gonna do it now, and he's gonna get hurt. 
The servant said young master Hu Lun dares to mess with someone who doesn't know the current events. Hu Lun said that it was too late to regret and went to attack Doug Jingcheng. Even though Jing Kong was injured, he skillfully dodged his opponent's punches. Hu Lun's sword flew out of his hands. He tried to pick it up and continue the fight again. Just then, Xu Nian came over and took his friend under his arm. Hu Lun asked if Xu Nian wanted to intervene in their conversation. Dugu said that the sword-wielding genius is no more. A servant shouted that Hu Lun was waiting for Xu Nian's reply. You can't ignore him. Hu Lun shouted that he was about to become the number one hero. And Xu Nian might lose his arm as well. No one had ever made him so angry. He was burning with anger and resentment. No sooner had the servant finished his speech than Xu Nian finished his work. The servant's arm was separated from his body so quickly that he didn't realize it at once. Xu Nian said that this was compensation for Dugu Jingcheng's hand. While the servant was mourning his limb, another servant decided to pounce on Xu Nian and rush to attack. Xu Nian did the same thing with this in one motion as well. The young man meted out justice left and right. He gave no mercy to anyone. Hu Lun asked if Di Xu Nian wanted to take his hand as well. Xu Nian replied why not. Xu Nian said that those who robbed civilian women dared to woo their military and government counterparts on the street. Hu Lun said that a one-star silver war sect could straighten out a three-star silver moon sect in a matter of seconds. Let's see what he, a five-star, can do. The young men stood against each other, preparing to go on the attack. Each was confident. Hu Lun shouted out that some people would die if they were offended. The opponents crossed swords on the battlefield. Xu Nian was as calm as ever. Hu Lun believed that the fight would soon end with his victory. The fight was getting fiercer by the second. No one wanted to give up. The forces were roughly equal. The clang of metal could be heard as the swords clashed. Xu Nian used a magic weapon and took out his battle bone. Hu Lun shouted for Xu Nian to advance and meet his doom. The young man dodged and kicked his opponent's sword far upwards with his bone. Hu Lun cried out in fright. He didn't expect this turn of events and screamed how could this be. Everyone thought that he had actually exploded and flew away from the five-star body sex sword. The young man thought that he was definitely saved today. Xu Nian grabbed Hu Lun's hand. The latter asked, what is he going to do now? Xu Nian said he was going to fulfill his promise. Separate the arm from the body. Hu Lun started shouting that the latter had no right and they didn't agree like that. Hu Lun shouted for Xu Nian to get lost and swung to hit him. He decided to use the technique, heaven-shattering, world-shaking fist. Xu Nian also decided to show what he was capable of and their fists met. Hu Lun was terribly frightened and screamed in terror. He cried and screamed, my hand. Xu Nian said that it's just that some sections are broken, but they can be reassembled so it doesn't count. Xu Nian shouted that he wanted this one and separated his right hand from Hu Lun's. Hu Lun crouched on his knees and continued to shout, My hand! But one of his hands was already gone. Hu Lun shouted that now Xu Nian would not leave here alive. Xu Nian said then, to reinsure himself, he would be the first to deal with Hu Lun. The sword slid down Hu Lun's throat. He cried out in fright. Hu Lung began to make threats. He said that his uncle was the sheriff of Chen Tian County. If Xu Nian dealt with Hu Lun now, his uncle would take revenge on him and his entire family. Xu Nian said that he was always ready to welcome uninvited guests. The young man said that Hu Lun had promised to deal with him anyway, so he would lose nothing if he dealt with Hu Lung first. Hu Lun did not expect that it was possible to address the matter in this way. He started apologizing and saying he was misunderstood. In fact, he was wrong. He said that he shouldn't have done that to Dugu Jingcheng and shouldn't have offended Xu Nian. I'm ready to work it off. He promised to hide far away and never show his face. Hu Lun kept begging to be spared and not executed. There's someone else flying in who wants to make a point. Hu Lun shouted loudly that it was Yu Cheng's brother who was about to save him. Yu Cheng landed spectacularly with his sword in his hand, ready to do justice at once. He asked Xu Nian without much conversation. He detached his hand. The latter immediately nodded in the affirmative and added that he was always in favor of serious conversation. Yu Cheng said that he always acted honestly and advised the young man to keep his hand in the game as well. Xu Nian agreed and offered to do it together. A moment later, the young men were settling their issues with swords, man to man. Each of them led a fierce attack. Our hero did not look tired. Yu Cheng said that Xu Nian is doing well with his strength and agility. Would he like to join his Tianlong team? Everyone was amazed at such an unusual proposal. Hu Lun said that there were no more spots available on their team. Besides, Xu Nian had just cut off his arm. He can't be recruited. Yu Cheng told Hu Lun that he no longer has a hand that can hold a sword. So what is the need for such a warrior? He needs new talents. Hu Lun cried bitterly. He was very hurt. Hu Lun shouted that Xu Nian should die right now. Yu Cheng repeated his proposal and told Xu Nian to join his Qianlong team. 
and they will all become a big friendly family that helps each other. Shunan said that he has to refuse, since he sees what's going on with the members of this team, and they're not that friendly either. Yu Cheng was a little annoyed. No one had ever turned him down yet. He said maybe Junian would want to practice now, and then there's a chance he might change his mind. Yu Cheng jumped up to make his opponent realize the seriousness of his intentions, and at once, to make him afraid. But the opponent was not a weakling. Hulan also noticed how serious his brother was now. He said, This is Yuan Jian's thunderous shock. This shock had ruined many Silver Moon War sects. Xu Nian would definitely be in trouble now. Yi Cheng declared that he wanted to crush Xu Nian's arrogance with his sword. Xu Nian said that he was very interested to see how Yu Cheng could win with a single sword. The young man stood in the middle of the square all serious. The energy around him was beginning to boil. Dugu Jingchen realized that a legendary gifted vision had come upon the young man. He said that people with natural talent and vision have amazing looks. The young man told his opponent that he wanted to see the power of his heavenly sword technique. And on such an occasion, both opponents soared up. Upstairs, no one could interfere with them, and there were more places to turn around and not feel constrained. Shunian offered to take the sword away from him. His opponent had become a blob of energy, a ball of nerves ready to explode. That's what happened. Junian gave him a very strong knocking blow. Blood spurted out of his mouth. He went tumbling across the arena. Junian calmly landed beside Dugu Jingcheng. The young man asked, Maybe it would be worth it to completely deal with this Yu Cheng? Junian said, Let us see how he behaves next as long as he only lost consciousness. For now we have to hurry because the injury is too serious. This is no joke. Junian came to report to the sheriff. The sheriff, as always, asked with a smile on his face, Did Xu Nian break through to Zhang Zong? Xu Nian replied that it was only yesterday. The sheriff said that's pretty good. The sheriff added that the 16-year-old Zhang Zong was a once-in-a-thousand-year rarity. The town leader asked, When Xu Nian fought Yu Cheng the day before, Did he showcase all his talent and vision? Or did the young man have more to surprise? The sheriff said that Xu Nian was about the same age as Woody. Therefore, he can safely call him Uncle Chen. Zhu Nian immediately called the sheriff like that and said that last time, Uncle Chen said that Woody had something and needed help. So he is always willing to provide that help. The sheriff said Woody was very lucky now because he got such a good brother. Uncle Chen said that Woody actually has a person with a special physique as well. And it's a relatively powerful star battle body. Zhu Nian interjected, star battle body? The sheriff said that there have been many body types in the history of Tianhen continent. There are four of the most famous ones. Immortal Lord Body, Star Battle Body, Innate Sword Spirit Body, and King God Lord Body. Among them, the Immortal Lord Body and the Lord God King Body are suitable for physical development. The Star Battle Body and Innate Sword Spirit Body are suitable for spiritual practice. Anyone with a special physique when they grow up will definitely become an Emperor level power in the future. Su Yanin said, An unrivaled talent is cultivated in the body. The next step will be taken very quickly. Uncle Chen continued that the originally invincible talent was actually very strong, and it was a legendary saint level. Further, under his training, the sun reached the realm of the One Star Sect at the age of 12. The world is changing rapidly. Shunian was amazed that at 12 years old, Woody was a One Star Warrior. But what happened next? Why had he regressed? Four years ago, Woody went out for a walk and met the Imperial Prince Zifeng. The prince had imperial level talent and relied on his strength. He forcibly plundered the stars and the foundation of the martial body into an invincible body. Woody lost his development and his talent dropped from saint level to king level. The sheriff said he proved to be a useless father. His son was humiliated and revenge was never achieved. Uncle Chen said that the prince was the emperor's favorite son, so he only got off with a month of rigorous imprisonment. The sheriff disagreed but he couldn't go against the Imperial family. Xu Nian said that the Invisible Man would not blame himself. Woody didn't blame him. He even comforted him with words. He said he could have practiced from scratch and the speed would have been slower. Prince Zifeng turned out to have a vicious heart. Not only did he take away the foundation of Woody's star battle body, but he secretly injected the demon flower poison into Woody's body. Xu Nian said it is a chronic poison that becomes more toxic as spiritual practice increases. Zhu Ya Nian said that this Prince Jifeng turned out to be very evil. The sheriff agreed and added that now that the poison had spread throughout his body, there were only three months of life left. The young man interjected, so Woody only has three months. 
He asked Uncle Chen what should be done and who should be dealt with to save his friend's life. The sheriff replied that he had a secret recipe that could save the young man's life. Find someone with a similarly special physique, take some of their rich blood power to make a cure, and combine it with various powers to detoxify him. During the college competition, there was a girl with an innate sword spirit body. They tried her blood, but could only temporarily suppress the poison, but couldn't completely neutralize it. The sheriff said, knowing that Xu Nian had the gift of vision, and his physique might be stronger than he thought, it might be worth trying to do this to him. Uncle Chen summarized that he would like to experiment this with Xu Nian's blood. The young man said he would be happy to share and become a donor to save Woody Chen. If the medicine really works, his blood should have an effect. The sheriff said regardless of the outcome of the treatment, he is very grateful to the young man. We have to save Woody. Xu Nian made an incision on his arm and drained some of his blood to prepare the medicine. Uncle Chen walked over to the sick Woody and said that there was going to be a healing session now. The young man accepted the cup from his father's hands. He had hoped that the poison could be removed from his body and that the disease would go away. Woody thanked Xu Nian for his help and suggested that he have a good snack after taking the medicine to replenish his strength and restore his energy. The young man could not refuse. After all, he loved a good meal. Especially it would restore his strength. Woody Chen drank the entire medicine in one gulp, his friend's blood was to his liking. Then the guy lay on the bed and said the medicine was starting to work. The sheriff suggested that Xu Nian return to his room and rest until tomorrow, to regain his strength. Tomorrow, we'll see what effect the medicine has. The young warrior decided to exercise his bone and began to perform warm-up exercises. He used aggressive training methods to improve his bone skills. The guy decided to take a break because the workout was proving to be exhausting. Shunan thought that the doubled gravity and thunder collapse were using 80% of their power. The power of the assassin's weapon had reached a new level. The young man told the girl she could come out. The girl asked how the guy knew she was around. Junyan was surprised that she had to hide and sneak out in her house. The green-eyed blonde embarrassedly asked the young man to get dressed and not walk around with a bare torso. She added that she had come to thank Shunian for healing her brother. She heard a noise in the courtyard and went out to see what was going on. Shunan asked if the girl had looked in on her brother. How was he doing? The guy said no thanks. Woody was his friend. Even if the sheriff wasn't looking for him, he would have come himself, seen Woody was sick and offered his services. It's just a little blood, it's no big deal. The young man asked how his brother was doing. The girl said that her brother was feeling much better. The poisonous gas in his body began to dissipate gradually. The sheriff said that in a few hours, Woody would be completely neutralized. The strength of Shunian's bloodline is really very great. The young man said he was very touched that the girl had come to thank him. She added that the sheriff was looking for Zhu Nian. The boy replied to have the girl take him to his father. All three of them approached the small stones on the estate. Uncle Chen said that his son's situation has become stable and calm. Zhu Nian was glad that Woody was all right. This is good news for him. Now he waits for more instructions from Uncle Chen. The sheriff replied that the kid could take it easy. He'd figure out something to keep him busy. The town leader added that Xu Nian had reached the level where man and sword become one. But does the young man know the real magical effect of combining man and sword? The young man admitted he had no idea. The sheriff said he was about to show him how to use the sword pose. Perhaps once the young man saw it, he would understand a little more. The sheriff asked to keep a close eye on him. He did something with his hand that made everything in front of him swirl, even the rocks caught in the air current created by the sheriff. Uncle Chen asked if everything was clear now. Xu Nian and the sheriff's daughter stared with their eyes bulging. They didn't understand anything. The sheriff explained that it's actually very simple. Whether it's a sword pose, a fist pose, or a knife pose. All of these poses are manifestations of the power of heaven and earth. The palm he had just used didn't use much spiritual power. But the power of heaven and earth that was triggered increased the power of the attack. Xu Nian interjected, is the power of heaven and earth really involved here? Uncle Chen continued that people were in the single sword realm, and there were three realms above. After gradually practicing successfully, Xu Nian would also understand the power of heaven and earth. The guy asked what levels the three realms of heaven and sword unity had. The sheriff replied that the difference between the worlds is a sharp blow with a sword, a wooden sword, and a cut stone. The sword breaks the gold. The daughter asked the sheriff that cutting hair with a sharp sword is considered kingdom? To cut a stone with a wooden sword, to break gold with your finger, is it difficult or not? The sheriff said he wanted to demonstrate it now, and plucked one hair from the young man's head. 
he stretched his arm forward, holding his hair. In his other hand, he took his sword and prepared himself. Sherius let go of the hair and sliced it lengthwise in half with his sword. There are few who can do such a thing. The young men saw it for the first time. Then the sheriff caught a twig. The branch in the sheriff's hand radiated energy. The sheriff used this branch to send a directed energy beam in the desired direction. Shunian was stunned by the terrifying aura control. The sheriff didn't relent and decided to surprise his audience once again. He showed his fingers emitting a powerful pulse of energy. With those fingers he cut a certain object in half like butter. The man asked if the young man now understood the full power of this technique. In fact, true unity between man and sword requires harmony of heart and sword, harmony of chi and sword, and also harmony of mind and sword. The sheriff said that Xu Nian would handle it from here, and he would go check on his son. The sheriff asked how they practiced. It took him five years of practice to reach the three-level sphere. He added that while they are young, they should practice more and gain knowledge. The daughter told her father that Xu Nian had already mastered everything. The sheriff was very surprised to get this information. He asked how his daughter was doing. She said she was still in the process of practicing. The father called his son and told him that his sister was no longer needed. And from now on, the family would rely on him alone. A young man from somewhere above shouted out that Chen Woody had returned. He said that his star battle body had returned. Chen Woody landed softly and asked if Xu Nian would be willing to spar with him. Xu Nian said that he could make Woody cry. Father and sister will watch him. Woody Chen said that if Xu Nian cried when he beat him, his sister and father wouldn't laugh. The young man shouted that he was the most invincible master. Immediately, without a second thought, he rushed into battle against Xu Nian to show who was strong here. Woody Chen threw powerful punches at his opponent. Xu Nian only defended himself but did not attack, and so our hero made one return leg kick to his opponent's chest. Chen Woody has taken the lead. He said that he was about to surprise Xu Nian with his reception. The young man put his hands together, swung around, and delivered a sledgehammer-like overhead blow to his opponent. Xu Nian thought to release the triple gravity ring restrictor. The guy spread his arms upward, and like a volcano prepared to erupt. The warrior in flight struck his opponent with a fiery fist straight into his chest. Chen Woody flew upward under the force of the blow. Chen Woody said that he had enough struggling, he hadn't unleashed his natural vision yet. He will rest for a while, and then try it again. The sheriff only laughed in response. The sister smiled modestly. Over the next three days, the young people continued to practice. All the while, the sheriff instructed them during breaks and pointed out their shortcomings in battle. The young men were improving their skills. After that, they would enter the arena again and the sparring would continue. Woody Chen said someone has booked a banquet for his recovery. Zheng Fu members will be present, and he invited Xu Nian to attend. Zhu Nian said that he didn't want to go, because there would be a bunch of hypocrites there who do nothing but flatter or humiliate each other. The young man said that he couldn't bear to see such people, so there were always conflicts. Woody Chen said that Xu Nian's fame has been going ahead of him lately. That's why he wants to bring a friend with him to the party. Woody Chen once again asked to go to the party with him. When he was sick, no one paid attention to him. Now that Xu Nian has helped him, he wants him to be there for him. Woody Chen said that he will show at the party how he can fight with hypocrites. Xu Nian said that this Tianhua restaurant is really impressive. Woody Chen said that he was invited by Ding Hao, a three-star member of the Jiang Mansion and a seven-star member of Jiang Zong. Mo Zai had reserved a seat here. The banquet arranged by the wolf team is solely for the purpose of using it as an excuse to create an event. Someone called out to Xu Nian, what's he doing here? The young man said he wanted to come here, and he doesn't have to answer to anyone. The guy said the restaurant was booked for tonight. Today is Dean's older brother's banquet. Xu Nian isn't on the guest list, so he can't attend. Woody Chen said there is already that possibility, and the young man gave his interlocutor a good slap. The one asked who he was and what right he had to slap him. Woody Chen said anyone can hit him. The young man said for Ding Hao to come out. Ding Hao replied, Who are we sick of living? Is there anyone in this city who would dare not take Ding Hao seriously? And to the young people who had come to the party, Ding Hao himself descended. The young man who was injured by Woody Chen began to tell that he was called out by the same guy who had gotten him in the jaw. With him next to him is Xu Nian, who destroyed one of his men in the first place. These two came to cause trouble here. Ding Hao stared intently at the aliens. What do they want here, he thought. Chen Woody only smirked in response. Ding Hao slapped his henchman once more. He didn't realize what was going on. He didn't even say anything Ding Hao shouldn't hit him, but the aliens. Ding Hao said that he hadn't seen Woody Chen for a long time. He had changed a lot. 
Today is the celebration of his recovery, so let's not let this event be spoiled by some little things. Ding Hao said that Li Yuan should apologize to Mr. Chen. Li Wen realized that this young man is the sheriff's son, and he was the one who had just recovered from a serious illness. Li Wen said that he was very sorry. He apologizes and will never do it again. Woody Chen said he was fine, but his son-in-law wasn't allowed into the restaurant. So, we have to apologize to him first. The young man was astonished. What do you mean, son-in-law? Ding Hao only threw this party to pursue Woody Chen's sister. He had his eyes on her. Ding Hao was very upset upon hearing such news, but the young man didn't let on and said that the banquet was waiting for them. It was time to go upstairs and start the fun. They all went out together to celebrate and party hard. Ding Hao hospitably invited everyone in. Ding Hao introduced the new guest to everyone present. This is Chen Wudi, the son of the governor of our Dongyuan County. Today's banquet is in his honor. One of the guests said that he couldn't understand why Ding Hao had decided to spend so much money. Turns out it was for his son-in-law. Woody Chen was surprised by this news and said that Ding Hao was not worthy to be his son-in-law. Ding Hao asked what he had offended him with. If Woody Chen was unhappy about something, he could say it now. Woody Chen said it was his fault, poorly explained. But he always tells the truth. Ding Hao is really not worthy of his sister. He warned him for his own sake, so that he would not waste time and give up as soon as possible. The girl said no nonsense is allowed. Ding Hao said that Chen Wudi was greatly mistaken. Ding Hao had reached the realm of the Seven Stars War Sect at the age of 24. He is also a famous figure in the War Palace, a worthy second young master of the Ding family. He added that if not Ding Hao, then who was worthy? Woody Chen said he found a son-in-law. It's Xu Nian. Everyone present was astonished at such news. The young man introduced himself and said that his name was Ding Hao. Xu Nian probably doesn't know him yet because he recently entered the military palace. He is a member of the Molang team. Xu Nian introduced himself as well and said that he was indeed new to the military palace. The young man said that if you do super difficult tasks alone, you can get a two-star membership status. He continued to talk about Xu Nian's accomplishments and added that he had straightened out Liu Mushan, handled Hu Lun, and defeated Yu Cheng of Team Tianlong in a head-on fight. Ding Hao said that he didn't expect Xu Nian's younger brother to be so powerful. Maybe Xu Nian wants to fight and see who is cooler. Woody Chen said that the Seven Star War Sect is competing with the newly created One Star War Sect, so we should cross swords to see which sect is the cooler by far. Ding Hao suggested that Xu Nian choose a bet with which they would test each other's level of toughness. Xu Nian said that 500,000 tails would be enough. The opponent got very tense when he heard such a hefty sum. Ding Hao clarified, would he be able to find 500,000 tails of gold? Or himself gave Sister Zhao a bag that contained just such an amount of money. Sister Zhao is rebelling. The girl confirmed that the right amount of money was present. Ding Hao pronounced that he would get rich big time today. He had already accumulated 400,000 in four years of work plus family subsidies. He approached the captain and asked to borrow 100,000 for a short time. Ding Chao was confident of his victory and suggested making the task more difficult so that it wouldn't be so easy to hit the jackpot. He suggested competing blindfolded. The opponent said he was so kind, but he agreed to these terms. He figured he could beat up his opponent and not even have to make excuses later. The warriors stood across from each other in the restaurant room, each blindfolded himself. The audience forgot about the treats and watched the performance with curiosity. Everyone was wondering how this one would end and who would hit the jackpot. The young men got into fighting stances and extended their left arms forward. They began to study each other. Each of them tried to move their striking energy to the hand they were going to attack with. Both struck at the same time and their hands collided. Ding Hao said that his palm is only a test. If Xu Nian's strength is like this strike, then he will become 500,000 coins richer today. Xu Nian said that he was thinking the same thing about his opponent right now. Testing is a waste of time. Now he will show his strength as a champion. The young men moved around the hall with their eyes closed. Xu Nian lands a nice shot to his opponent's body. The young men ducked and struck at each other, trying to do as much damage as possible. And then one punch from Xu Nian reached the desired target, twisting his opponent's jaw. Everyone was afraid for the warrior, whether he would be able to continue to fulfill his functions. Xu Nian pondered what tactics he should choose now. Xu Nian asked why Ding Hao's punch was so bad. After he fell, the wall was damaged. We will have to pay compensation for the wall. Xu Nan asked, could this already be considered his victory? The girl announced that he had won. The young man said it was a very large sum of money. Now we can celebrate. Woody Chen asked his sister to go for a walk with him. Chen Woody, his sister, and Xu Nian went to the exit. 
The young men, sitting around the table and drinking, celebrated the victory. Woody once again thanked his friend for providing the blood, but he still needed time to recover, and he was fully recovered. The young men each had a shot to celebrate victory and recovery. Woody Chen asked Shunan, what did he think? Was it realistic to recover his strength completely? It means jumping to the two-star level at once. Shunyan was already in a good mood. Chen Woody said that there were some good things in his father's treasury, including a large number of elixirs. They are currently consuming one of them. Then those elixirs would all belong to him and his sister. Woody Chen said that Shunyan could now do whatever he wanted. The young man added that, Or is extremely strong now, and will definitely become even stronger in the future. Zhu Yanyan was already feeling good and was willing to continue strengthening his immunity with this mixture. Woody Chen was doing just that. He poured it in and said that he had all sorts of mixtures to strengthen everything. You just have to trust him. Brother Chen kept saying that these are all very good wines, so we should consume more of them. Shunyan's gaze was no longer the same. His aim was off. And his friend continued to say that they now had a very strong relationship, strength, the foundation of his entire life. Woody Chen said they have every chance to make themselves better. All the resources at the sheriff's mansion will help them improve their skills. Xu Nian agreed that he was presented with a very good opportunity. Woody Chen hugged his brother Zhu Nian and asked about the main thing. Does he like Sister Chen? Zhu Nian replied that she was very beautiful. Woody offered to marry her to become his son-in-law. I'm stopping here. Guys, if you like this video and want part 2, hit 2000 likes under this video. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and leave a comment. Until the next video.